السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد My dear respected viewers and uh, participants I welcome you to this uh, platform where we shall be hosting a program full of exciting and very uh, exciting pro um, recitations, inspiring lectures and beautiful nasheeds brought to you and presented to you from eminent um, people from around the world, inshallah. I hope you uh, enjoy this event, which has been brought in brought to you in conjunction with Al-Hidayah Foundation and National Hufwad Association. Uh, today we have, as I said, a beautiful and a very exciting lineup, and uh, I hope and I pray you enjoy and you benefit from today's event. I do apologize for the delay that's uh, occurred due to some technical issues, and as you know with computers and online stuff, there can be always last minute glitches, so I do apologize for that. And I do not want to um, take too much of your time because I've got guests. Um, we've got guests waiting to uh, participate. Alhamdulillah, this event, Al Baraka, Baraka event, uh, inshallah, Allah will bring Baraka to your lives and to uh, to everyone's life, inshallah. Um, now, uh, I'm going to introduce and begin the program with a colleague and a friend, uh, Ustad Mijanul Islam. Uh, he will be presenting a recitation of the Quran and uh, I'm just going to give a brief introduction to Ustad Mijanul Islam who is a professional Quran rec reciter and presenter who specializes in Islamic education, Qira'a and Tajweed and he is also the founder of Taha Ac Academy and also he is the um, uh, founder of uh, Yasin Academy Online and he is also a Quran instructor on Iman channel. Uh, so he's, mashallah, very uh, prominent and very um, uh, important roles that this brother plays in different areas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept his efforts. And I do not want to take any longer and any more time. I'm going to present uh, Ustad Mijanul Islam to come forward and inshallah enlighten us with this recitation. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأم والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته from sisters um, I'm Musa Mijanu Islam. Inshallah Ta'ala, just um, I'll be given about five minutes slot by um, Al Hidayah Foundation. Now, before I go into uh, my short speech for today, I want to speak about Al Hidayah Foundation, Mashallah Tabarakallah. For those who are new um, to uh, Al Hidayah Foundation, Mashallah, I can vouch for them that they're a phenomenal, phenomenal organization. Even though where I am and they're literally a few hundred miles away from me, but their um, hospitality, Mashallah. And the way the, the communication and just the way the organization is run, it's absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. I mean, especially Sheikh Mahmoud Mia and our beloved young brother Rayhan for giving me the opportunity to come on board and um, 
take part in this beautiful, beautiful online conference called Al Baraka. Now, inshallah, I've been given a slot to speak about um, an, uh, National Hafaz Association. Um, for those who may know, I am the National um, Youth Development Manager at Na uh, National Hafaz Association. So, my role is uh, to enrich our youngsters, to build programs for our youngsters, and to empower our youngsters, inshallah. Ta um, and National Hufaz has been around for over five years now, um, and we specialize in providing youngsters, young Hufaz um, placements for Taraweeh nationally and internationally. And Alhamdulillah, over the past five years, we have allocated more than uh, 2,000 um, placements for our Hufaz um, across the globe, mashallah, tabarakallah. Um, <clears throat> And one of the ethos of Nash Hufaz is that we want to embed the love of the Qur'an within our youngsters. Um, and the reason why I constantly emphasize about youngsters is, subhanAllah, at this day and age, we are losing our youngsters. Um, there are a lot of things that are happening in the world today, and our youngsters have been diverted. And the best thing that we can do um, as the teachers, as um, parents, is to empower our youngsters and help our youngsters where they need to be helped. And one thing where it's lacking a lot is the love for the Qur'an. Mashallah, this organization, um, not only do we provide uh, placements for Hufaz, but we also provide classes, we also provide courses for our Hufaz, also training for our young Hufaz, and not just Hufaz, upcoming Hufaz, so those who are still memorizing the Qur'an. So my brothers and my sisters, those who have children who are memorizing the Qur'an, sons and daughters, nephews and nieces, brothers and sisters, try inshallah get them connected uh, to the National Hufaz Association inshallah ta'ala and we will help you bi'idhnillah ta'ala. And just before I finish up my talk, I believe I'm coming to the end of my uh, slot is brothers and sisters, take this month of Ramadan as a month of turning point, as a month of turning point. Why I mentioned because we go through many things in our life. 11 months previous to the month of Ramadan, we've committed a lot of sins intentionally and unintentionally. So let's make this month the month of Rahmah, the month of Barakah, and the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves us from the fire of hell to make our life better, to change ourselves as a believer, and to make our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger than ever. And I hope, inshallah, Obviously, mashallah, we have a lot of prominent scholars um, coming up um, after myself. Inshallah, they'll give you insight to different, different topics. And I urge you, inshallah, brothers and sisters, my humble request is to take uh, beneficial knowledge from them, inshallah, and also to connect yourself with the Qur'an, bithnillah ta'ala. So once again, my humble... Um, Sincere uh, gratitude to Al Hidayah Foundation. May Allah bless everyone in the organization. And may Allah, Rabbul Izza wal Jalal, make the Masjid Al Hidayah a means for everyone um, in that community, who, those who are helping to enter Jannah Al Firdos. And on that note, wa aqulu qawla hadha wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyina maulana Muhammad ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruk wa tubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Ustad Mijanul Islam. Thank you very much for those kind words and for that beautiful recitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you and, and, and take you to more further successes in the dunya and the akhirah. Jazakallah khair ahsan al jaza. That was Ustad Mijanul Islam from Taha Academy um, with this recitation of the Quran and some words of inspiration. Jazakallah khair to him. And now we move on to our next speaker our next guest is sheikh sajid umar uh sheikh sajid umar is a uk born uh mufti and judge assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh can see you alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah alhamdulillah mashallah alhamdulillah tayyib alhamdulillah went mashallah allah yibari fikum may allah bless you all and bless this program and Amen. may Allah make the means of uh, the, the, the the benefits of this program spreading far and wide and the objectives that you all have behind it being achieved. Amin Ya Rabb. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. So um, I'm, I'm going to just say that uh, Sheikh is a judge and a Qadi and as well as an educator, author and rese researcher and developer with a vision to uh, enlighten communities that benefit humanity and uh, you know, um, uh, for, for the for, and for the wider Muslim community, Sheikh is very well known and has uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, activities in different fields Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him inshallah so I'm not going to take too much of your time Sheikh I'm going to go straight to you and I'm going to ask you to present your talk to us inshallah and inspire us with your talks Jazakallah khair as Allah yabarik feek may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and accept from us Amin ya Rabb Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa bihi nasta'in wa nusalli wa nusallim ala khatam al-Nabiyyin Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathiran ila yawm al-Din amma ba'd Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-Hakim Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilman wa amalam ya kareem Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him and we seek his assistance and guidance and we seek refuge in him from the evil of ourselves and the adverse consequences of our deeds. We testify that whomsoever he guides, none can misguide and whomsoever he misguides, then none can guide. And we request praises and blessings upon the final messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship besides one Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. Uh, to my dearest beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, to everyone at Al Hidayah Foundation, uh, the team behind this wonderful event, I greet you with the greetings of Islam, uh, the greetings of peace, and the greetings of the people of paradise. Salamu alayhi wa alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings and may safety from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all. It's a real honor uh, to be participating with Al Hidayah Foundation. Um, I think it's a it's a first for me, which makes it uh, a greater honor. Um, and um, it's uh, I also feel blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in uh, the hearts of those arranging uh, this event to include me uh, as part of those who will be uh, presenting here today during this blessed month, the month of of dhikr, the month of the, the ultimate dhikr, because uh, Ramadan is the month of uh, of Al Quran, and uh, the Quran is the ultimate uh, dhikr. Uh, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to to purify our intentions, to make our time together one that is pleasing to Him, and to make us a people uh, that hear a good word and we follow it. To make us a people that hear a good word and uh, we follow it as well. Amin Ya Rabb. Um, brothers and sisters in Islam, the topic asked of me uh, today is related to uh, to dhikr, to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this topic, brothers and sisters in Islam, is um, a very, very uh, important topic in terms of uh, our Islamic uh, teachings in terms of the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in terms of uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of our ability to build our Jannah. Um, and ultimately, that's what we're here to do. We are here as Jannah builders. We are here to build our Jannah. Um, and given everything that I've said regarding this topic, it's not strange that we have uh, in the Quran and the Sunnah, lesson after lesson, narration after narration, verse after verse, dedicated to towards this topic of dhikr, this topic of dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's start at the top. What is dhikr? Dhikr, brothers and sisters in Islam, as I have uh, just translated it, is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But is it confined to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues, then the answer to that question is no. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entails remembering him with our tongues, also with our hearts, and also with our actions, or in our actions. This is how the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes place. I know when we when we hear the term dhikr, it's commonly associated with saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, and all the other supplications and invocations of the tongue and this is correct it's not an incorrect uh, understanding to um uh, uh, to uh, you know meaning when you hear the term vicar if you understand it to be what i've just described it's not incorrect but it is naqas by naqas i mean it's not an absolute understanding of what the concept of vicar is vicar is far more comprehensive than just the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using our tongues. As I said, it also includes remembering Allah with our hearts. And that would naturally entail 
uh, remembering Allah with our hearts in the form of developing our iman, in the form of developing our taqwa, in the form of developing our uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or al-khawf, uh, in terms of developing our ability to have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is known as al-raja. Uh, it includes developing our ability to ponder over the creation of Allah, which is otherwise known as tafakkur in the Arabic language. And also our ability to ponder over uh, the lessons within the verses which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran or otherwise known in the Arabic language as tadabbur. Right? So here we see how we can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using our hearts. And then also brothers and sisters in Islam, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using our actions, in our actions, that before we speak or do anything, we think, is this act or statement beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If it is, I will do it. If it isn't, I will refrain from it. And this is how we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our actions. So this is what dhikr is, brothers and sisters in Islam, in terms of the comprehensive understanding uh, of dhikr. Now, why is dhikr important? Well, dhikr is important. Firstly, brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't have to go too far and wide and look for um, uh, or practice any form of gymnastics to try and uh, develop wisdoms that would uh, otherwise, inshallah, uh, convince us to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the concept of dhikr. Uh, simply speaking, it's because it's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And simply speaking, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us towards it in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us about it diligently across 23 years of prophethood. In fact, brothers and sisters in Islam, if you go through the entire Quran, you will never ever find a command to something after worship besides a command to dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us towards dhikr after dhikr. Right? And this is phenomenal. Um, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't command us towards being uh, abundant in terms of practice with regards to any action aside of the action of dhikr. And we must understand it comprehensively when I use this term, dhikr. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathiran. That uh, he commands the believers to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, an abundant uh, remembrance and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights a portion of what the process of dhikr entails when he says wa bukrata wa asila and glorify him glorify him at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in the earliest of muslims Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as those who yad'una rabbahum bil khadati wal yuriduna wajha they are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day solely for his sake, seeking his pleasure. So this is the reality, brothers and sisters in Islam, of dhikr. It's something that is uh, taught to us um, in association with the concept of of. Of, of doing it in abundance. Now earlier I said Allah, it's, this whole concept of abundance is manifested in also how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, commands us towards it after an act of worship. Let me give you um, a couple of examples. If we look at, for example, uh, the Muslims at Hajj during the day of Arafah, right? we know that when the Hujjaj are on the plains of Arafah worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's all they do. That's what they there for. That is their day. Right, that is ultimately the Hajj, and they there with full focus or to the, focus to the best of their abilities with their actions, with their hearts, with their tongues. They are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dua, through invocations, as well as through uh, the adhkar of the morning and the evening, meaning the duas of the morning and the evening, also the duas uh, of uh, the different uh, circumstances that we have, such as the dua uh, when entering the lavatory, when exiting the lavatory, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor you all, the dua before eating, the dua after eating, uh, when they greet each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for yes, even the salam is a form of dhikr. So they're doing all of this, right? From the time they get there till sunset. This is what they've spent the entire day doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ وَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ 
Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when you have completed your standing on the plains of Arafah and completed your day of remembering Allah from beginning till the end, from the time you started, you arrived at Arafah till the end of Arafah, or from the time you started your wuquf or the standing that takes place or the worship that takes place on the plains of Arafah until Maghrib, when the time of Arafah expired, Allah says, Allah kathikrikum. آباءكم أو أشد ذكرة. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, excessively. أو أشد ذكرة. He commands us towards dhikr after dhikr. Let's take another example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals about the day of Jumu'ah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he says, إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله. Right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says when you hear the call to the Jumu'ah prayer, فسعوا إلى ذكر الله. Rush towards the remembrance of Allah. This teaching, this teaches us that صلاة صلاة is also from ذكر. And it substantiates what we we said earlier that ذكر entails bodily actions, verbal actions as well as actions of the heart. So Allah says rush towards the remembrance of Allah. فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ And leave buying and selling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is good for you if you only knew. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ When the salah has ended, meaning when you've just finished remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ then you are free to go out in the land and trade and seek from the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. Allah says then, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively. That you finished remembering Allah through your actions. Now that you've gone into the world to seek worldly gain, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively verbally. And also with your hearts so that you trade properly and your transactions are upon the do's and away from the don'ts. And you're seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any mistakes that might have occurred during the buying and selling process. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged uh, the tujjar, the traders, to give sadaqah, to, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through being charitable. Yes, when you're charitable for the sake of Allah, this is also a form of dhikr. Right? You are living in, a, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are conscious of the fact that you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah is capable over you and that you are governed by his laws subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he told the, the traders to remember Allah through giving sadaqah for their trade uh, by mistake could be associated with a practice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. We know the traders, they, they are... Uh, they, they are uh, invested in the buying and selling process and salespeople can say something that they didn't intend to say, that they didn't mean, uh, which pollutes uh, the, 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 the trade process, which means uh, this will lead to them losing barakah so the Prophet and blessing. So the Prophet وسلم, said, give sadaqah. Right? In, uh, through this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and through this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring barakah. Now subhanAllah, it's amazing that these two concepts have been mentioned together, the concept of dhikr and the concept of baraka, because uh, baraka is uh, the overwhelming title of uh, today's conference. And we're talking about dhikr. And this is from the virtues of dhikr, brothers and sisters in Islam. And the third part that I want to share with you, we've spoken about what dhikr is. We've spoken about why it's important. And the next, and we've also spoken about how, uh, but in, in uh, developing on the concept of how brothers and sisters in Islam and why we need to appreciate the fact that when we live in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we aid our time and we aid our wealth with uh, this metaphysical um, investment. And that is the investment of barakah, of blessings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers it upon you, your one pound goes a longer way than it normally used to. Your one dollar goes a longer way than it normally used to. Your one minute allows you to do much more than it normally used to. You start feeling, subhanAllah, uh, that you are much more productive. You are much more engaged. You feel that you are getting more value for time and money spent in anything and everything that you do. And that's why brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, many people, and it's fine, we benefit from um, uh, from goodness wherever it is, whether it comes from a Muslim or whether it comes from a non-Muslim, but when you look at the self-help industry, 
and, and it, it is an industry today, right? Because that's where millions are made. If you look at the productivity uh, industry and books and books are written about innovation and about production and increasing productivity across the spheres of uh, the organization or the company, whether it's the executive tier, whether it's the non-executive tier, whether it's the production uh, tier, whether it's the resources uh, tier and so on and so forth. They speak uh, a lot about processes that can help achieve us getting better value for money spent and better value for time spent. But ultimately, brothers and sisters in Islam, a Muslim knows that ultimate uh, productivity comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving our sins and through that allowing us to receive his blessings, his mercy. And this is where we find uh, ultimate productivity, brothers and sisters in Islam. And that's why when a Muslim reads these books, when he or she reads these books, they should always have a pen handy to add the necessary details that talk about the concept from the Islamic paradigm because a Muslim doesn't just live for the sake of this world, but the hereafter. And the Muslim also knows that the reality of life is that we have a physical realm and a metaphysical realm. And the Muslim always knows that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides someone to his light, then subhanallah, they are ultimately guided in all their affairs. And a shay bishay yudhkar, as we say in the Arabic language, when you mention something, then mention that which is associated with it. Maintaining family relations, brothers and sisters in Islam, especially if we're speaking about this in this blessed month, this month of Al-Quran and this month of fasting, this month of uh, the prayer, this month of itikaf, this month of Sadaqatul Fitr, this month that brings to us the Eid, which ultimately means it's a month of unity. For this month brings us together as an ummah on so many fronts, right? As people who stay away from certain things from true dawn till dusk, it unites us upon that. As people who, who, who are charitable, in terms of the Sadaqatul Fitr, it unites us upon that. In terms of people who stand up at night in prayer, it unites us upon that. In terms of people who come together to celebrate the month that has just passed, it unites us upon that, right? And talking about Barakah and this union and this unity, one of the best ways to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to forgive the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to forgive them and to uh, build the relations with our family members to maintain the bonds of kinship. This is from the greatest acts of dhikr because it's from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. It's also from the means of building our jannah and from the means of bringing barakah in our time and our wealth for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a narration which is acceptable. Man ahabba ayyub sata lahu fi rizqih wa yunsa'a lahu fi ajali fal yasil rahimah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever uh, finds it beloved to him or her to have barakah in their time and their wealth, they should maintain their family relations. In doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open his barakah upon you such that you feel, subhanallah, your time brings you more and your wealth uh, brings you more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Brothers and sisters in Islam, um, what has been shared is sufficient for us to appreciate how we need to develop ourselves to live upon the platform and paradigm of a dhikr. Um, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has associated it with abundance. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to it after commanding us to it. We see from this brothers and sisters in Islam how it is a mighty uh, uh, benefit for us in terms of the life of this world and it bringing barakah into our lives here and also the hereafter in terms of it developing our hereafter. In, in fact, if we talk about verbal uh, dhikr, where we say uh, the, the adhkar and so on and so forth, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he famously mentions that when a person says, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, the angels are busy building his or her paradise. They're beautifying it. They're expanding it. They're digging uh, streams. They're burying uh, treasures. They're building castles. They're planting forests. Okay, I'm just adding context uh, to what he said. But you can imagine what the angels are doing just by us, subhanallah, with very little effort, keeping our tongues moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, along with the present heart as well. The heart must be present. It can't just be lip service, but it's done as, a, as an act of worship, which means the heart is connected to the tongue and accordingly the lips and tongue move. So when you do this, the angels are busy. And then he says, when the slave of Allah stops, then the angels take a break. But do the angels need to take a break, brothers and sisters in Islam? No, they don't. Right? If someone says, no, I'm feeling sorry for my angels. 
they've been working too hard. Let me give them a break and stop remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't even feel comfortable saying that, right? Because the angels, you can only imagine, feel sad when they left to do nothing. Subhanallah, right? So don't give your angels a break. They don't need a break. They are created to work tirelessly. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So let them develop your paradise in a way whereby when you get there, you see the fruits of your years on earth. Brothers and sisters in Islam, who from amongst us wants to go to Jannah and see barren land? Because we didn't work towards developing it when we had the chance that Allah gave us this mighty space, a Jannah that has a width which is greater than the heavens and the earth. It has been prepared for the, the people of Taqwa. And we are in the month of seeking Taqwa. May Allah make us from the Muttaqun. Amin Ya Rabb. Who wants to get there and see Subhanallah? But you know, that could have been developed and that would have been more amazing if we did that. But Subhanallah, we didn't utilize the time as we should have uh, utilized it on earth. So nobody wants to um, uh, go to their paradise and see barren land. Rather, you want to get there and see it developed in such a phenomenal way, in a way that no heart has ever dreamt of, no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of. That is the reality, brothers and sisters in Islam, of our time on earth. We are Jannah builders. And if you understand the concept of dhikr properly, you can see that you can be a Jannah builder whilst you're at work. You can be a Jannah builder whilst at the gym. You can be a Jannah builder whilst on holiday. Subhanallah. If we just tweak our intentions and focus in on our speech, our actions, and the way our heart operates, we can become 24-7 Jannah builders even when we're outside of the masjid, even when we're outside of Ramadan, even if we are outside of the days of Hajj. Subhanallah. This is the reality, brothers and sisters, in Islam of Islam and Iman, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the ability to build Jannah. And it doesn't require us to do much differently aside of obviously the acts of worship, which are acts of worship in and of themselves. That definitely is part, of, part and parcel of the package of Iman and Islam. But in terms of the other mundane activities of life, if we just tweak our hearts, which then entails our actions and speech becoming tweaked, we become 24-7 Jannah builders, as the scholars have opined in the books of Islamic jurisprudence and the principles of Islamic jurisprudence. They say, uh, Subhanallah, that the mundane, permissible activities of life, they become acts of worship through one's intention, by remembering Allah with the heart. And no doubt, it's the heart that is the king of the parts of our body, when the heart is correct, then the rest of the body is correct. And when the heart is spoiled, then the rest of uh, the heart is spoiled. I think my time is coming uh, to an end. Um, and mashallah, uh, you have many blessed people, uh, knowledgeable people who will come after me to take you further on this journey uh, of barakah and uh, perhaps even <coughs> touch on what we've just shared. Just one thing I will add, brothers and sisters in Islam, before I end. Uh, is that just to add completion to our um, our discussion of dhikr? Uh, dhikr is a concept which the which the different rulings of Islam apply to. Right? We know that in Islam we have a ruling known as wajib. In Islam we have a ruling known as mustahab. In Islam we have a ruling known as haram. In Islam we have a ruling known as makruh. And in Islam we have a ruling known as mubah. Right? So haram means forbidden. Makruh means disliked. Mubah means permissible. Wajib means compulsory. Uh, these are just uh, loose translations, but they give you the idea. And mustahab means recommended. This also applies to dhikr. For we have some of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is compulsory. Right? If we look at the verbal remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have the takbiratul ihram. The takbir that we observe at the beginning of the salah. This is compulsory. The salah doesn't happen without it. Right? Uh, and then we have the adhkar that we observe during ruku' and sujood. These are from the wajibat. Okay? But if you miss it, uh, then uh, the Sharia has teachings in terms of how to rectify yourself because you forgot to do it. But the point is that we have adhkar that uh, fall within the uh, within the category of wajib and that being compulsory. We also have adhkar that are haram, for example, like for example, um, uh, doing verbal adhkar during the khutbah of, of the uh, during the Jumu'ah khutbah. During the Jumu'ah khutbah, we need to be listening attentively to the khatib, right? So a person raising their voice or uh, doing dhikr in a way whereby they can hear themselves. This goes against the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is not the time for dhikr. Uh, also from the compulsory adhkar can be responding to the salam because if a person greets you, it becomes compulsory upon you to respond in a way equal to how they greeted you 
or a way better. So for example, if someone says Assalamu Alaikum to you, then it becomes compulsory upon you to say Wa Alaikum Assalam. To initiate the greeting is a sunnah. To respond to it is compulsory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا That if you are uh, welcomed with a welcoming or uh, this includes greeted with a greeting, then respond to it. This is a command. Respond to it uh, in a better way or at least in the same way. So if someone says, Assalamu alaikum, it becomes compulsory upon you to say, Wa alaikum assalam. If you don't, that is forbidden and you are sinful. Uh, if someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, then in the least you have to say, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And it's even better for you to say, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And if someone greets you with the full greeting, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, then you need to respond in full. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So here we see brothers and sisters in Islam, we have some adhkar that are compulsory and some adhkar that we're not allowed to do given the circumstance. And then the general ruling pertaining to the adhkar and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they are highly recommended. وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهُ فِي كُلِّ أَحْيَانِ يعني أحوالي. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during different circumstances with the adhkar known as adhkar al-ahwal, right? The, 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 the du'as of circumstances, the du'a before eating, after eating, before sleeping, after sleeping. Uh, when a guest, when you, when, you, when you visit a guest, when you leave a guest, when you wear clothes and so on and so forth, when you enter the masjid and leave the masjid, this was his way, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And last but not least, brothers and sisters in Islam, don't forget that the best dhikr is the recitation of the Qur'an. For we have in uh, narrations uh, considered acceptable, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching us afdalu dhikri ba'da al-Qur'an o ba'da kitab illa o ba'da qira'at al-Qur'an subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. So here uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the best remembrance after the Qur'an so the scholars have deduced from this that the best dhikr is the recitation of the Qur'an. And no doubt when you recite it, you get a hasana and a hasana is equal to 10 rewards. And that is phenomenal brothers and sisters in Islam in terms of building our Jannah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Everything shared which is correct is from him alone and he's perfect. And any mistakes are from myself and shaitan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from me from uh, Al-Hidayah uh, and from the speakers that will be participating today and all the viewers uh, tuning in and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people who put the good that we hear into practice, especially as we enter the best nights of the year, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Jazakumullahu khairan. Hada wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Shukran jazeelan. Shukran ahsan al jazaa. Alhamdulillah. You know, this is a beautiful uh, speech that, that's very inspiring, very informative. Jazakallah khair ahsan al jazaa for delivering such a powerful and inspirational nasiha to us. Allah accept it from you Amen. and Allah grant Amen. you further success in the dunya and the akhirah. And we Amen. request that please remember us in your du'as in these, uh, in these uh, uh, nights and days of Ramadan. Uh, please make sure uh, that you pray for us as well, inshallah. Allah bless you. I request the same from you. Wafakakum Allah. Amin. Amin. Jazakallah khair ahsan al jazah. Thank you very much. Shukran. <coughs> Um, now, uh, Alhamdulillah, we are moving on to our next guest. Uh, this was Sheikh Omar, who Sajid Omar, who presented a really beautiful uh, lecture. Now we are moving on to our next guest, uh, Sheikh uh, Ustad Shabir Hassan, who will be uh, presenting a talk. Um, just a brief introduction: uh, uh, Ustad Shabir Hassan is a spoken, uh, uh, is is a poet. TV presenter and a speaker who aims to share his thoughts through different dimensions and platforms. Uh, Ustad Shabir has an Alamiya graduate from Ibrahim College in London and he's also the founder of uh, Nikah.co, which is one of the largest and leading um, Nikah service provider. So without taking much of your time, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ustad Shabir Hassan to jump in and give, uh, present his uh, talk to us. Jazakallah khair ahsan jazaa for joining us. Thank you. Barakallah fiqh. Thank you so much for having me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassili amri wa ahlul uqdatham min lisaadi yafqahu qawli. 
سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وعبلا بفضلك يا رحمن الرحيمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to our dear brothers and sisters I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful and I send my peace and blessings uh, upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, alhamdulillah we, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know Ramadan as they say has just been flying by uh, we're now into uh, as we speak you know for, for a lot of us this is day 19 now um, we're pretty much you know going to very soon be witnessing um, the, the last 10 days the last 10 nights of Ramadan which as we know it is pretty much agreed upon that the last 10 nights of Ramadan are the best 10 nights of the year and the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the f- best 10 days of the year. So the best 10 nights of the year are fast approaching. Why are they the best 10 nights? We know because within and amongst these 10 blessed nights of Ramadan, each and every single one is blessed, no doubt. But amongst them, we have the, you know, the leader and the most superior of all nights, which is none other than Laylatul Qadr. Right, Laylatul Qadr, which we can translate as the night of power, the night of glory, or the night of decree, the divine decree as well. Qadr has many meanings, subhanAllah, in the Arabic language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know, He says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr, that we reveal the Quran on this blessed and powerful night. So when we talk about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the theme right now as we are discussing, which is the main topic. Right. When we talk about Barakah, which is in fact the the name of this actual, um, you know, the name of this conference. Right. These are, you know, this is the epitome. This is the the height of Barakah and Rahmah and of the Dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because Laylatul Qadr, that's what it's all about. Right. And it's something that, inshallah, we have the chance of witnessing and being there for. Like our Prophet, وسلم, he tells us of two individuals, two people. One of them, right, uh, was martyred. OK. And, you know, uh, the, their life came to an end. And another died a year later. But they died a, a normal, natural death. And the Sahaba, they were curious to know, you know, which one is better. And all of them expected that the martyr, the one that died, fi sabirillah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the preceding year, the year before, surely must be the better one because nobody can match the status of the shuhada, of the martyrs. And the Prophet said, no, what about the other person who died a year later, right? Did this person not get to pray more salah and do more good deeds? Did this person not... Uh, witness another extra month of Ramadan. Did this person not be <clears throat> able to witness an extra Laylatul Qadr potentially? And therefore, the, the longer life you have, like our Prophet tells us in another narration, that the best of people are those who have long yet blessed lives. Oh, Kamal Qal, alayhi salatu wasalam. Right? The, the best of people are those that have longer lives, but they they they're able to do good in those long lives of course you could it could be the opposite may allah protect us where you have a longer life and that you just prolong that into sin and into rebellion uh, and into uh, you know uh, going astray from the from the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the best are those who have longer lives they have time on their hands and they actually use that time in the best way and there's no better way uh, to utilize the time that we have than to use it through the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah tells us in the quran uh, you know, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ He says, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly so that you may be successful. We talk about success nowadays, right? How can we attain that success? What is success even, right? Is it, is it, do we define success by, you know, the number of followers that we have on social media, the, 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 the amount, uh, the income, right, that we, that we uh, receive on a monthly basis in our bank accounts, you know, the status that we have, you know, the titles that we have, right? Is this what defines success? The, the piece of paper, the degree that we have, is this what defines success, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want to be truly successful, you want to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to make mention of the king of all kings. Yeah, because he says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ That if you remember me, then I will remember you. Meaning, I will remember you in a much better gathering, right? You might remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will remember you, right? Imagine, subhanAllah, the king of all kings, the master, our Lord, remembering us, making mention of us specifically, 
right? You want to be from the elite. You want to be from the highest. You want to be from the most superior of people. Then really, is there anyone better than the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers? And many verses in the Quran where Allah tells us, you know, in Surah Al-Kahf, He says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ You know, make mention of your Lord. May, you know, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember your Lord when you forget. Meaning the moment you remember Allah, meaning that, you know, we are neglectful as human beings, right? We can forget from time to time. But the moment that thought enters, we should quickly mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. And subhanAllah, Islam is such, our deen is such that there is literally an opportunity to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every walk and way and step of life. Literally, think about it. From the moment we wake up in the morning, we're supposed to begin in the name of Allah, right? You know, there's so many du'as. We begin by saying, Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah. Alladhi ahyana, the one who gave us life again. Ba'dama amatana, after he caused us to die. Wa ilayhi nushur, and to him is the return. We remember Allah, as soon as you wake up, you say, Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna. You know, oh Allah, in your name, we enter the morning. In your name, we enter the evening. From the moment you, you get up, then you go to the toy. SubhanAllah, even going to answer the call of nature before entering the, the, the toilet. Right, we have a dua even for this as well. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. You take Allah's name again. Min al khubuthi wal khabaith. Right, oh Allah, I, I seek protection and in you from the male and female devils. And subhanAllah, when you come out from the toilet after answering the call of nature, there is a dua even there as well. Ghufranak, we say. Oh Allah, I ask you for your pardon and forgiveness. And some of the scholars they discuss why after coming out from the toilet out of all places. Right from the restroom out of all places after answering the call of nature, why do we say ghufranak? Why do we say, Oh Allah, forgive me? Did you do anything wrong? No, I mean, you just did something which is completely natural. Why do you need to now ask Allah for forgiveness? And they say, Subhanallah, that that time that you spent right within that, uh, within the, the restroom where, where you were for those however long you were in there for a few minutes perhaps. Because you, you are not able to mention Allah's name for those few minutes because you're not allowed to, you know, it goes against complete etiquette to mention or remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when you are in such places or when you are in places that are known to be dirty or filthy, you don't mention Allah's name there. You wait till you come up because for those few moments or minutes or however long it was, you weren't able to take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we told to say? Oh Allah, forgive us. Forgive me, oh Allah, I wasn't able to remember you for those few minutes. So now let me remember you as soon as I come out. SubhanAllah, before you eat, Bismillah, you finish eating, Alhamdulillah. In everything that we do, I, I can't think of a single thing. When you're putting on new clothes or new shoes or entering into the masjid or going outside of the home or starting your car up and going on a journey, right? I can't think of a single thing in which there is not a dua for. There is not a, a, an opportunity to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? This is the beauty of our deen because it is a way of life, subhanAllah. It is a way of life. And you, you, you think about all of the du'as that we can recite and all of the opportunities to remember Allah. Really, there is no excuse to say, I don't have time to remember Allah. Because the way that the deen is and the way that the sunnah is, the remembrance of Allah has been embedded within our lives. Does that make sense? The remembrance of Allah we don't need to take specific time out to remember Allah. It's already been embedded within our daily routines. That's the beauty of it, right? So, you know, like, like I said, you know, you don't need to take time out to, make, to, to, to mention Allah's name, you know, uh, uh, at certain points of the day. It's not only when you pray salah. Okay, dhuhr time or fajr time or isha time. That's only when I can remember Allah. And in between, I can't remember Allah. You know, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the way, you have to... Uh, you know, remember something that you don't need wudu to just remember Allah. Like, obviously, if you want to pray salah, you need wudu, right? If you want to open up the Quran, the mushaf, and touch it, then you need wudu for that. If you want to go and perform tawaf around the Kaaba, you need wudu for those things. But to just generally speaking, remember Allah, like with the tongue, okay? Just you want to make some dhikr. You want to say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. You want to say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You want to do your morning adhkar as an example. You just want to recite some du'as here and there in the morning, in the evening, whatever it may be, You want before you go to sleep. You know, you, you don't need wudu. I mean, it's nice to be in a state of wudu. You know, it's better to be in a state of wudu, you could argue. Definitely, there, there are benefits to this. But what, the point is that 
from a very legal point of view, you don't need wudu. So you don't need to face the qibla. I mean, it's etiquette to face the qibla, but again, you don't have to. You can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ Those who remember Allah, qiyaman وَقُعُودًا Standing and sitting and وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ And reclining. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they ponder over the creation of, uh, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the heavens and the earth. Right? That you can do it in any position as well. You're lying down in bed, you can remember Allah. You're sitting at home in your office, you can remember Allah. You're sitting in your car, you're sitting in the train, you're commuting. This is what we call that dead time. You know, you're not really doing much. Most likely you're probably scrolling on your phone, watching TikTok or something, right? Even in those moments, you can just say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So just remember Allah, right? You're standing, you're walking, right? You know, you're doing something, you're in the middle of a task, you know, you're cooking some food or, you know, you are doing some work or you are on your way somewhere, you know, you're traveling. You can just remember Allah. You don't need to be in a specific position. You don't need to go to the masjid to do it. You don't need to have wudu to do it. You don't need to, uh, you know, face the qibla to do it. You don't need to be in a specific position to do it. You don't need to wait for a specific time to do it. It is the most flexible act of worship, subhanAllah. And the the, the dhikr of Allah is... It can, you can, there's so many different types of adhkar out there from saying subhanallah to saying Allahu Akbar to saying astaghfirullah to saying subhanallah wa bihamdi. And the beauty is, subhanallah, think about this in Ramadan, tying it back to Ramadan. Think about this that our Prophet, وسلم, he didn't really give us many specific things to do when it comes to Laylatul Qadr. Like, we don't have a specific thing. He didn't say, like, you need to pray this many rak'at and you need to recite these specific surahs and you need to, you know, uh, come at this specific time. There's not really many specifics on Laylatul Qadr, except a very few things. Of course, one of them we know, standing in prayer, observing the night prayer. Man qama Laylatul Qadri iman and wahtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhabir. So we know that. Standing in prayer, meaning the qiyamul layl, observing the night prayer, this is one, but that's very ge general, right? But subhanAllah, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet وسلم, if I know it's Laylatul Qadr, then what should I say? And he, alayhi salatu wasalam, he responded by saying, you should say, Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. That out of all things, the Prophet وسلم, he did mention one thing that is specific to Laylatul Qadr, that is specific to this night of power and decree. And that is the remembrance of Allah. One of the ways of remembering Allah is to make dua, is to call out to Allah. And the Prophet وسلم, he taught us a very beautiful and specific dua tailored for Laylatul Qadr, which means Allahumma, O oh Allah, innaka afuun, you are the one who pardons. Tuhibbul afwa, you love to pardon. Fa'fu anni, so pardon me and forgive me. Right? You are asking Allah for forgiveness and for his pardon on this blessed night. And this is a specific dua. Why did the Prophet give us this dua? Because he's encouraging us to remember Allah as much as possible. He is encouraging us to, to ask for forgiveness. Right? This is one of the key themes. So if we want to unlock the great potential that these last 10 nights, in particular Laylatul Qadr, if we're inshallah able to observe it, right? then the key to it is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The key to it is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, you know, we shouldn't uh, let this opportunity go, right? You know, while, you know, during the salah, of course, you're remembering Allah. After salah, you make dua, you're reciting Quran, you're making dhikr in between, right? There is nothing better than this. Because remember what Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I shall remember you. Subhanallah, you know, we, we cannot allow this month to Ramadan, of Ramadan to come to an end until we have been forgiven. And we should make as much dua as possible from now. And these are my last few points that, that I'm going to conclude with now, inshallah, which is that make as much dua as possible from now. Oh Allah, allow me to witness Laylatul Qadr. Oh Allah, allow me to be able to make use of and maximize the time that I have remaining in Ramadan. Oh Allah. Allow me to, uh, uh, you know, exert myself like the Prophet ﷺ would in these last 10 nights of Ramadan. Oh Allah, do not allow Ramadan to come to an end until I have been forgiven. Until, as they say, you know, this, these last 10 nights of Ramadan, 
are known uh, to be uh, specifically uh, the, the benefit is itqun min nar is for protection and deliverance from the hellfire. Okay, that that's it. If you're able to do well in these last ten nights, and that's it, your name is removed from the names or the list of the wretched people. May Allah protect us. Who will enter into the hellfire? Your name will be enlisted amongst the group of special people. Right, you will be put on inshallah that VIP list. Those who will enter into paradise. Those who will inherit al firdaus paradise. Hum fiha khalidun. They will abide therein forever, for eternity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst these people. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to uh, allow us to, gi to give us a tawfiq, in fact, to remember him more, because this in fact is. Uh, a blessing from Allah that when he allows us to remember him it's actually a blessing from Allah that he's allowed us Allah. that in and of itself is a ni'mah and I'll end with this that once one of the prophets some say it's Nuh salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how can I be grateful to you how can I be grateful to you when just the ability to be grateful to you is another blessing in and of itself that I need to be thankful for and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al -ana. Now you have understood what shukr means. That everything, even the, uh, you might think you're doing someone a favor. You might think, uh, you know, Na'udhu Billah, you're doing Allah a favor for remembering him and praying to him. You're doing yourself a favor. It, it, it's actually a favor upon you. It's actually something good for you that helps us, enhances us spiritually. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this amazing conference put together by Al Hidayah. And uh, you know, places immense barakah in the remainder of the time that we have. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Ustad uh, Shabir Hassan, for this beautiful, thought provoking uh, reminder. I hope uh, everybody will benefit from this, inshallah, and Allah accept oh, yeah. from your uh, your presentation. Allah make um, and grant you uh, more success in your endeavors and in your activities, inshallah. I, mean, I, I would also like to say that to all our viewers, uh, do buy uh, uh, the, the book that's, that's been written by yourself, uh, A Beautiful Patience, um, 40 Life Lessons from Surah Yusuf. Uh, I would encourage our listeners and our viewers to get this book and inshallah uh, learn uh, those 40 lessons mashallah which is uh, excellently elaborated by uh, Shabir Hassan sub um jazakallah khair for your um, for your efforts and for your presentation thank you very much barakallah may Allah bless you thank you thank you jazakallah okay and also i would like uh, our viewers to uh, provide any comments they have um, and also, if they want to make any recommendations, uh, any comments, please do put them in the comment section. Um, a reminder that our um, um, YouTube channel, uh, we host a live daily live Tarawih Salah. We host uh, events around the uh, um, from time to time with eminent uh, speakers from around the world. I would encourage uh, everyone uh, to subscribe subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram and Facebook uh, accounts. Uh, please do uh, subscribe to them and inshallah you, sh you will benefit from this inshallah. Our next speaker is Sheikh Mustafa Mutir from Jordan uh, who is joining us uh, to present a beautiful recitation of the Quran. Ahlan wa sallam wa marhaba bikum Sheikh. Sheikh, uh, I'm going to um, introduce you. Sheikh uh, Mustafa Mutir is an international, world renowned reciter of the Quran and Nasheed artist from Jordan. He has led Tarawih and prayer salahs, uh, salahs all over the world, including Egypt, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and Turkey. So we are really honored to have him on board and, and to listen from his recitation. Um, I, I, without any further, de further delay, I'm going to Pass over to Sheikh Mustafa. We will have 10 minutes to recite from the Quran for us. Jazakallah khair ahman ya shukran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuh. 
وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدس القدوس الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ صور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله Jazak Allah khair ahsan al jaza barak Allah peak shaykh thank you very much for, for taking your time out i know you have a very busy schedule you are currently i believe in misr at the moment uh, and hopefully soon inshallah one day we want to see you in in al hidayah foundation leading salah here bismillah ta'ala wa tasharraf bikum shukran thank you for everything jazak Allah khair thank you for honoring us with 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 this recitation شكراً جزاك الله خير. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. So, so I um I hope everyone is enjoying um the event so far. الحمد لله. We've had some very inspiring uh, talks. We've had some very uh, thought-provoking reminders. We've had some beautiful recitation of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept every one of our participants and our guests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a, a means of uh, our salvation on the day of Qiyamah. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of us uh, gaining a high rank in Jannah. Now, um, without any further de uh, delay, I'm going to say a few words for the next slot um, i'm just going to say a few words on the on the importance of dhikr and how we can maximize the benefits of dhikr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he um, has made dhikr the most 
important feature of every single ibadah. If we look at salah, if we look at psalm, if we look at any type of ibadah we, we perform, the over the the, the most uh, o- the overriding and the most important feature of every ibadah is essentially the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aqimis salata li dhikri. Establish the prayers for my remembrance. Basically, prayer, the ultimate purpose is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a very beautiful saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he states, La yazalu lisanuka ratban bi dhikrillah or ratban min dhikrillah. That you should not have a moment without dhikr. Every moment of your life, you should continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your, your tongue should continuously, continuously be moist with the dhikr of Allah, with the remembrance of Allah. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَفْضَلُ الذِّكْرِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَفْضَلُ الدُّعَى الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ the best dhikr a person can say and a person can utter is la ilaha illallah this is the best best form of dhikr and we know from another hadith rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam states that if we were to put the entire word on one scale and we put la ilaha illallah on the other the scale which has la ilaha illallah will far outweigh everything else from the other scale. So we can understand the value and the power of dhikr, the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people who have studied or would know that the, the last hadith, hadith in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Bukhari is a very beautiful and it is a hadith in relation to dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, Kalimatan, Habibatani ila Rahman. There are two words, there are two statements which are very beloved and dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalimatani, Habibatani ila Rahman. Two words, two statements which are very dear to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, they are heavy they are heavy scales so on the day of qiyamah where the the reward of these will 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 bear heavy on the scales of uh, uh, of mizan on 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 the day of uh, of resurrection they are really light on the tongue so these two statements are beloved to allah light on the tongue, heavy on the scales. So what are these two words? What are the two words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much and gives so much in return? And that is subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. These two words have immense power, immense power as as we can understand from this hadith. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says some beautiful words which are thought-provoking and which are really, really, uh, which really draw our attention to the importance of dhikr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ He says, shall I not inform you of the best deeds shall i not inform you of the best deeds and it is most beloved and very dear to your lord so that the action and and the and the thing that i will be mentioning now it's really best in terms of your good deeds and it is really close and dear to Allah, your Lord, and it has the potential to elevate and raise your status on the day of Qiyamah. 
So it has the power to raise your rank. So your rank in Jannah will not be at the bottom, but it will be at the highest end, at the highest level. Then he says, And this action, and this amal, and this good deed I for you and mentioned to you is even better than spending and silver in the way of Allah. It is even better than charity. وَخَيْرٍ لَكُمْ أَن تَلْقَوْ عَدُوَّكُمْ فَيَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَكُمْ وَتَضْرِبُوا أَعْنَاقَهُمْ And it is even better than meeting the enemy in the battlefield and exchanging blows. It is even better than that. So the Sahaba said, قَالُوا بَلَا يَا, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Ya Rasulullah, please do tell us what this action is. That this action is the best of deed. It is the, the most dearest to Allah. It is the most elevating in terms of status in Jannah and Darajat. It is better than spending in the way of Allah. And it is also better than meeting the enemy in the battlefield. <coughs> so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah is better, is the best deed, and it's it's the actions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> then in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sabaq al Mufaridun. Sabaq al Mufaridun. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the Mufaridun, the Mufaridun have excelled. They have gone way above everybody else. Qalu, wa mufarriduna ya Rasulullah? The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, who are those mufarridun? Who, who, what, what's, who are these people? He said, Adhakirun Allah kathiran wa dhakirat. Those men and women who excessively and who intensely remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are known as the mufarridun. And he says, Sabaq al mufarridun. Those who are mufarrid. Mufarrid actually means, literally means, those people who um, separate themselves <clears throat> and they, in, in their seclusion or in their separation, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They take time out to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what's known as the mufarridun. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that those people who do dhikr excessively are known as mufarridun. And they have excelled and they are way above in rank than anyone else. Sabaq al Mufarridun, that the Mufarridun have <coughs> taken a position so high that nobody can reach them. So, this is the, <coughs> this is the, um, this is uh, a very important reminder <coughs> that we should engage in dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, Ya ladhina amanu thkuru allaha dhikran kathira. O you who believe, engage in excessive and and as much as we can, uh, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, as, uh, whatever we can um, perform in terms of dhikr, we should engage in that uh, as much as we can. <coughs> now what happens if a person does not engage in dhikr? Dhikr and remembrance is actually uh, a, a sign of life, a sign of life, uh, the life of the Iman. We have physical life, we have a physical form, and our heart beats and our breathing is here. So we are, we, we, you know, we can determine if a person is breathing, breathing, and then on that basis we can distinguish if a person with the with the heartbeat with the breathing. <coughs> Rasulullah gave us a very different definition of the living and the dead. And it's very thought provoking and very important to remember. He says, He says that the person who remembers Allah and the person who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their example and their analogy is like the living and the dead. <clears throat> the example and the analogy is like the living and the dead. 
what, do, what does this mean? This means that a person who remembers Allah and who is engaged in the dhikr of Allah, he or she is alive. And a person who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who does not um, engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are dead. They are not, they are like the dead, meaning their heart in the their spiritual sense is not functioning. They are not a um, they are not considered to be alive. This is a very serious uh, uh, there, there are serious implications and consequences for people in dhikr that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has defined them as <coughs> as being dead. And he has defined those people who engage in dhikr as alive. So we can understand dhikr is the, is the source of life for our qalb, for our heart. It provides us uh, spiritual life. And then another warning for people who uh, may be laxed or who may be negligent about dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ this is very strange and this is very, very, you know, severe warning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. He says, <clears throat> the person who turns away, who turns his back to the remembrance of Allah, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ The one who, who turns away from the dhikr of Allah, نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints for that person a shaytan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints for that individual a shaitan who will be his companion <clears throat> and he will be his constant companion, the one who will not re relieve him or will not will not release him and will not give him any uh, time to ponder or to engage in dhikr. So <clears throat> we know that uh, if we turn away from dhikr, this, this is a consequence that we have to face that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may uh, appoint for us a shaitan who will be a constant companion, a companion who will be with us all the time. And as we know, shaitan is a companion that we should not have. Shaitan has nothing better for no, no good intention and no good will towards the humans. He is our adu, he is our, our, our enemy. In, uh, in the shaitan alakum adu wa mubina, shaitan is our clear enemy. Shaitan has no interest, good interest in his heart for the human beings, for you and me. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a shaitan as our companion, then we have a massive problem. We will be <coughs> we will be struggling in the dunya and we shall be struggling in the akhirah. So um, for that reason, I would uh, engage uh, I would encourage people to engage in dhikr and as mentioned previously by, by 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 our speakers dhikr is very wide dhikr has no restriction you can perform dhikr standing up perform dhikr uh, lying down there is no particular format for dhikr dhikr anything you can be performing your work in the kitchen you can be performing your work in your own workplace you could be walking on the street and you can still be doing dhikr at the same time. Dhikr is not restricted. Dhikr is uh, possible in every situation. Even, even entering the toilet and before entering the toilet and after entering the, in the toilet, we, we are in to, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we enter the toilet with the dua and we come out from the toilet with the dua. So even in these times, Dhikr should not be abandoned. <coughs> um, so, dhikr should be um, should be part and parcel of our life. And if you look at at, at the at the ayahs, if you look at the du'as that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he recommended people to read and recite, you would see that for every single occasion, every single occasion there is a du'a. I cannot think of a moment when there is not a dua which should not be recited. The moment you go to bed, there is a dua. The mo not one dua, there's several duas. The moment when you wake up, there is a dua. Go to the bathroom, there is a dua. The moment you come out, there's a dua. 
the moment you your food there is a dua the moment you finish consuming is a dua there is a dua for drinking milk there is a dua for uh, for consuming a meal there is a dua when you leave your home there is a dua when you end when you board your vehicle there is a dua when you come back home there is a dua you know we have duas in every moment of our life there is not a single moment which in which the hadith has not no dua for it every moment every human interaction there is a dua even giving salam is a dua even um, you know uh, expressing salam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you know even giving a greeting is, is a dua because you are mentioning allah's name you are remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so what what does this mean what does it mean it means that our life should revolve around dhikr of our life there should be dhikr there should not be a moment in our life where we do not engage in dhikr and that is the most important message that we need to take home from this this conference and this uh, event is that we need to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single occasion and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَا يَزَالُ لِسَانُكَ رَطْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Make sure that your, your, um, your tongue is moist with the dhikr of Allah. What will happen? What will happen when people stop doing, doing dhikr? As I mentioned to you the examples of the living and the dead. I, I mentioned to you about uh, shaitan, a constant companion of a person who does not engage in dhikr. And look at this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states in a hadith لا تقوم الساعة حتى لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض من قال لا إله إلا الله أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the moment the moment when there is no person on earth who says لا إله إلا الله when such a moment comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about the day of judgment, will bring about qiyamah. So what we know is the very existence of people who do dhikr, the very existence of people who uh, engage in dhikr is a reason for the qiyamah not to take place. The moment nobody says dhikr, the, no, the moment nobody says la ilaha illallah, that is the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about qiyamah. So we can see the value even in the dunya of the people who do dhikr, the people who remember Allah, the people who say la ilaha illallah, afdalu dhikri la ilaha illallah. The best, the best form of dhikr is la ilaha illallah. <coughs> and the moment when this Kind, this category of people cease to exist and people stop doing dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's nothing to prevent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about qiyamah the only thing that, that it does is the existence of people saying la ilaha illallah la taqumu sa'a illa ala shirar al nas the, 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 the qiyamah the, the, the day of qiyamah will come upon the worst of people so we can see the value of people who do dhikr in the dunya that their presence, their presence is warding away Qiyamah. So you can imagine what their rank will be on the day of Qiyamah, in the Hashr, in Jannah, in, 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 the, in, the, in the Barzakh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat such individuals because their rank and their status, as mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is that they have excelled everybody else. Sabaq al-Mufarridun. And Mufarridun and Dhaqirun Allah Kathiran wa Dhaqirat. Mufarridun have excelled every person, every category of ibadah. These people have taken the lead. They are at the for forefront of all good people. And so we can see their status, the status of dhikr, the status of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even saying one subhanallah. What does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Subhanallah walhamdulillah tamla'u ma bayna samai wal ard. Tamla'u ma bayna samai wal ard. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Subhanallah alhamdulillah has the potential. Subhanallah tamla'u al mizan. 
one subhanallah if you say one subhanallah it has the potential to overload and overburden the scales of righteous deeds on the day of qiyamah subhanallah tamla ul mizan walhamdulillah tamla ma bayna samai wal ard and one alhamdulillah has the potential the reward to fill the gap between the heavens and the earth so can you imagine that one subhanallah and one alhamdulillah how potentially powerful and rewarding it is you know we can as we as we have mentioned from our pre previous uh, presenters and our guests they have been uh, reminding us and they have been constantly uh, drawing our attention to the fact that we need to uh, utilize this time we need to utilize this time and let me tell you something once the time has expired once we stop breathing and the reality dawns upon us and we are facing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one wish that will never be granted to any person any individual whether they are in jannah or jahannam that request is to come back and return to the dunya because they realize how wasteful they have been how negligent and complacent they have been in the dunya once they realize this they will ask allah ya allah give us the opportunity to go back to the dunya and do better in terms of our ibadah in terms of our remembrance in terms of our good deeds and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not grant this request this is one request that shall not be granted to anybody whether they are in jannah or whether they are in jahannam obviously the people in jahannam they will say ya allah send us back we will do good deeds and we want to go to jannah we want to save ourselves from jahannam so allow us to go back to dunya so we can enter jannah and the people in jannah will make the same requests they will say ya allah send us back to the dunya so we can gain extra rewards and extra <clears throat> and higher status in jannah and again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, not allow that request <clears throat> it is mentioned that the people in jannah will have no remorses they will have no regrets allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill all the desires all the requests all all that they want as as as, as mentioned previously allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a'adadtu li ibadi as-salihin ma la ayn ra'at wa la udhun sami'at wa la khatara ala qalbi bashar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre prepared in jannah what no eyes has seen no ears has seen and no heart or no mind has ever ha thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has present has prepared for the salihin such ni'mat and blessings in Jannah. In these blessings, the only regret the people of Jannah will have is that they could not utilize sufficient time in, in the dunya, in the remembrance of Allah, in the ibadah of Allah. This will be their <coughs> remorse. They will say, I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have spent more time uh, in the ibadah of Allah and the remembrance of Allah than in futile things, in watching TV, in, in social media, in doing anything which is not beneficial. They will wish for those moments and they will, they will have remorses for the wasteful times in the dunya. So we can, we can, we can draw conclusion <coughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us, every one of us, uh, plenty of opportunity in this month to uh, utilize this for our our akhirah, for our um, well-being in the akhirah. So I I will um, <coughs> I will um, yeah. So I will ask everyone to um, engage in in whatever form of ibadah. It doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to be on a large scale. It can be on something small. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he says that the, the ibadah which is done regularly, even though it is small, is more valuable than an ibadah that's done in great scale once only and then not repeated again. So make a habit of reading subhanallah, make a habit of reading uh, the tasbih. So uh, 
I will finish on this. Uh, the Sahabas came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the poor Sahabas. The Sahabas who could not spend on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, <coughs> our rich brothers amongst the Ansar and the Muhajireen, they have wealth and they spend the wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consequently, they have huge rewards in the Akhirah. And we are poor people and we do not have the means to spend in the way of Allah. How can we match our rich brothers in Jannah? So he said, shall I tell you not a, a way in which you can match, match them <coughs> and become equal to them? He said, read 33 times subhanallah, 33 times alhamdulillah, and 34 times Allahu Akbar after every salah. So the Sahabas, the, the poor Sahabas were really happy with this response that the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr of Allah has the potential to make their standing equivalent to the rich people or the rich Sahabas who were spending in the way of Allah. Unfortunately, this message received, uh, went to the rich sahabas as well and now they began to do the same thing so now they were doing the dhikr the tasbih after salah and also <coughs> also there was they were spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> now the sahabas came back to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ya rasulullah they have discovered our secret they have known what we are doing now can you tell us something extra that we can excel them and even it could be a match for them rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said dhalika fadlullah yu'tihi man yasha that's allah's fadl he gives it to him who who he he wills <coughs> what we can understand from this hadith is that the dhikr and remembrance of allah has the potential to elevate your status in jannah it, it can make your Jannah, uh, you know, a place you can is beyond what your wildest dream, which will be, ha you know, uh, such a place that with your dhikr and with your remembrance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will beautify and decorate and, and exalt your position in Jannah. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give us the tawfiq to practice upon what has been said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept every one of us. And in the last 10 nights and 10 days of Ramadan, which are coming up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, accept uh, and, and grant every one of us itqum min nar freedom from the fire of Jahannam. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter our name into the register of the people who are faizin and, the, and successful and those who will enter Jannah. We will be taking a very short break for Salat al-Dhuhr. We will be um, 15 minutes break. And uh, after Salat al-Dhuhr, we will uh, commence again. So inshallah, we will take a pause and then we'll, we will resume and see you again very shortly after Salat al-Dhuhr. Jazakumullah khair, Hassan al Please stay in touch and please uh, retune again in 15 minutes time. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, dear viewers and participants, uh, welcome back to the second session to, of this Al Baraka event uh, brought to you by Al Hidayah Foundation and supported by National Hufadas Association. I welcome you back to this uh, event. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of our salvation on the day of Qiyamah. Um, before I uh, proceed any further, just a few reminders. Please do subscribe to our sub subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube channel, where inshallah we uh, broadcast live taraweeh prayers every night of Ramadan. And also we have regular events like this. So please do stay in touch, subscribe to our channels. Uh, we have channels on Instagram and Facebook as well, if you if you would do that as well. Similarly, um, I just wanted to, just to remind you, uh, remind you um, if you uh, have any uh, intentions or you, are, you have any plans to give in the way of Allah, please do so. This is the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the reward of uh, every good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh gives uh, a minimum of 10 rewards for for a good deed however in ramadan this is multiplied many many times over so do any you know if you have any intention of spending in the way of allah do it in the month of ramadan and inshallah the blessings will be returned to you and the reward will be returned to you many folds and on that note i would just to uh, like remind like to remind you that we have in the description box uh, down below a just giving page uh, to support al hidayah foundation currently we have a car park project if you have uh, if you have time please do and uh, if you if you are able to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the ability to help us and support us in this project we are currently uh, we have a car park project uh, that uh, that addition and any help from yourself will, will be appreciated allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you uh, um slight uh, an apology from one of our guests unfortunately sheikh abu bakar al-shatri uh, has just uh, sent his apologies due to some uh, difficulties he is unable to join us today uh, but he prays for us and he uh, wishes as well and uh, he's he has um, he, he remembers remembers us in his duas. So unfortunately, Sheikh uh, Abu Bakr Ashatri will not be able to participate uh, in today's event, and he does send his apologies. So um, what we'll do now is we will go to our next guest, uh, Hafiz Abdul Majid, who shall be presenting a recitation of the Quran, and he will be presenting us. Uh, recitation of the Quran now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Tabarak al-lazhi ja'ala fi s-samai buruja'u. وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إن 
فيها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما صدق الله العظيم Jazakallah, ahsan al jaza to Hafiz Abdul Majid for the recitation of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from the Quran and uh, give us the tawfiq to practice upon the ahkam and the rulings and the instructions contained within the Quran. Jazakumullah khair ahsan al jaza. Now we are moving on to our next uh, esteemed guest who is joining us all the way from South Africa and he is a well-known and renowned uh, personality sheikh suleiman rabat uh, um, i have the honor of introducing him he um, i will just uh, mention a brief uh, bio regarding sheikh suleiman rabat he's from johannesburg in south africa he is an award-winning presenter at radio islam international where he has been hosting Sabahul Muslim program for the past 13 years. He is an executive uh, member of Jamit al Ulama South Africa and serves as the secretary of Nurul Islam Center, which is one of the largest mosques in South Africa. So um, I believe Sheikh is with us, and I will pass mm -hmm. over to Sheikh 
to join us. Jazakumullah khairi ahsan al jazaa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Thank you for giving us your time. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Mahmoud, and Jazakumullah for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لك الحمد حمدا دائما مع دوامك ولك الحمد حمدا خالدا مع خلودك ولك الحمد حمدا لا منتهى له دون علمك ولك الحمد حمدا لا منتهى له دون مشيتك honorable scholars uh, respected brothers, mothers, and sisters, dhikr, uh, remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala, talks to the very purpose of our creation. It takes us to the verse of the Quran where Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah says, I've created man and jinn, لِيَعْبُدُونَ To worship me. Now what does worship mean? Uh, we normally restrict our understanding of worship uh, to the performance of salah, for example. But let's think about it. It's not realistic to expect uh, a person to be in the masjid all day. Uh, not even all day. It's not realistic to expect a person to be in the masjid for most of the day. A person can only be in the masjid for a portion of the day, even if that person is performing all five daily salah as it ought to be performed, even if that person is performing some nafil salah, etc. It's not, it's not possible to spend all of your time in the masjid. It's not possible to spend all of your time uh, saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, on the on the tasbih as we call it, the rosary bead, uh, or it's not possible all the time to be engrossed in the recitation of the Quran. So what does ibadah mean uh, when Allah says, I've created you to uh, for, my, for my ibadah, for my worship? And simply put, the ulama have explained, ibadah means that at every juncture of your life, you do what Allah wants you to do, and you abstain from what Allah wants you to abstain from. So whether you're eating, whether you're sleeping, whether you're relieving yourself, whether you're intimate with your spouse, whether you're playing with your children, whether you're taking some me time, as they say, uh, whether you're out on a uh, bit of a retreat and a bit of a holiday with the kids, whatever, whenever, however, you are mindful of Allah. And that's the greatest dhikr. The greatest dhikr is to be mindful of Allah. Wa ta'ala. And that is a 24-7 thing. That before you go to bed, you're mindful of Allah. As soon as you wake up, Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. You automatically log in with Allah. You plug in with Allah. You connect to Allah. Nowadays, I mean, we are obsessed with our handheld devices. And many of us, unfortunately, the very last thing we do before we sleep is we check in. Hey, any WhatsApps I missed? The first thing we do when we wake up, hey, what's happening? Anything latest? Let me check my WhatsApp. Now, as a believer... What it ought to be is, is, is that uh, it needs to be a situation where the last thing you do before you sleep is connect with Allah. Allahumma bi ismika amutu wa ahya. Uh, you contemplate over your day, whatever good you did, you ask Allah to accept. Whatever weakness there may be, you ask Allah to forgive. The first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning is, Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. You acknowledge that it's only Allah who gave you life after the minor form of death, which is sleep. And like that, if you look at all the masnoon duas that are taught to us, before eating, after eating, before entering the bathroom, after exiting the bathroom, entering the home, exiting the home, wearing your clothes, before sleeping, after sleeping. It's meant to constantly remind us and make us mindful that everything goes and happens only with the permission, the decree of Allah, to link us back constantly to Allah. Look, we are, the word is liya'budun. So it comes from the word abd, right? Uh, and abd, we translate it in English as slave. Um, we normally have a very negative connotation to the word slave because when you talk about the word slave, you, you think about African people being shipped off to the Americas uh, to be used as slaves. Uh, but in Islam, the word abd has a very beautiful meaning. There's a difference between a servant and a slave. A servant has working hours, has a particular job description, and it, starts, it stops at that. A slave is perpetually on duty. A slave does not uh, have a job description per se. You're perpetually in the service of your master. So that's why Allah uses the word abd. But abd in Arabic has a beautiful meaning. It means that when you enslave yourself to Allah, that is when you truly liberate yourself from everything and everyone else. And if you do not enslave yourself to Allah, you will become a slave of something or someone else or everything and everyone else. So if you look at people today, they think they are liberated. They think that uh, you know they have freedom. 
but in reality they are slaves to their careers to their bosses to their hobbies to their friends to their spouses to their routines to their fetishes they slaves to something or someone or anything and everyone but it is only when you enslave yourself to allah that you truly become liberated and this is where dhikr fits in uh, and we don't very often perhaps very rarely do we think of dhikr in this particular context that the ultimate dhikr is for me to be constantly aware of allah now this month of Ramadan is the month of taqwa. La'allakum tattaqoon. The scholars tell us this ever so often and it is uh, embedded deep in our memories. But what, what is taqwa really? Taqwa doesn't mean that you must only perform salah, give zakah, keep your fast, uh, go for hajj, uh, abstain from haram. That, that is part of taqwa, a very integral part. But taqwa means exactly this which I was talking about. That at every juncture in your life, you are mindful of Allah. When it's time to eat, you enjoy your meal. But you do it from halal sources you do it in a halal way you do it thanking allah mindful of the fact that it's only allah who gave me the ability to earn the money with which i bought the food it is only allah that gave my body the ability to digest and ingest and process and then eject um, what is not required uh, after the entire process is over it is only allah who gave me the ability to taste who gave me the ability to chew who gave my wife or whoever prepared the meal the ability to mix the ingredients. So at every juncture to be mindful of Allah, it's only Allah who gives me sleep. There are millionaires, nay billionaires in the world who have to pop multiple pills just to get a decent night's sleep. They are insomniacs. It is only Allah who gave me the ability to breathe. If anything in this last year, we ought to learn the value of, of one breath, you know, one breath, how, how important it is. And, and this is what I want to focus on in the first part of, of my um, interaction with you uh, today. And that is that uh, dhikr is not only when we verbally say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allahu Akbar. Verbal dhikr has its place and it has its significance and its virtue and its benefit. But we need to now know what is the, the ultimate. Even if we're not there yet, at least when you know what is the ultimate, you can work uh, towards achieving the ultimate. And the ultimate is to be totally mindful of Allah every second of your life. This does not mean that life will become boring. This does not mean that you can't do fun things, that you can't be with your spouse, you can't be with your kids, you can't eat, you can't drink, you can't socialize, you can do all of that. But you just need to do it in a way that is pleasing to Allah. You need to do it in a way that Allah wants you to do it. You see, that's why in Surah Rahman, Allah says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ That for those who fear that they will have to stand before Allah on the day of Qiyamah, for them is double reward, jannatan, two gardens. And uh, if you look at it in the context of the tafsir of this verse, when Allah talks about another two gardens later on, وَمِن دُونِهِمَا jannatan, We learn that these are gardens in the upper levels of, uh, of jannah. Why? Why two gardens? Why double the reward for a person who fears the fact that he will have to stand before Allah? It is because this person is mindful of Allah. When you have to, you see, there's a, when, when you fear the fact that I have to stand before Allah, it's like that kid who says, you know what? Even, I know if I mess up, my father will ultimately forgive me because he's my father, he loves me. But I feel embarrassed. How, how do I stand in front of my Allah? If I failed at school, for example, and I know my father worked extra shifts just to be able to pay my school fees. I know that my father would wake up at odd hours to take me to school and drop me off from school. And now if I fail, even though I know my father will forgive me, he's not going to kick me out of the house uh, he's not going to cut me off financially. But the fear that I've disappointed my father. You see, so that, that consciousness is what will motivate this, the, the son to ensure that he dedicates himself to the studies uh, in order not to disappoint his father, even though he, he knows his father will forgive him if he has to mess up. Now, we know that Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim, and we have hope that Allah will forgive us, although there's no guarantee of that, but we have hope. But the devil sometimes tries to mislead us with that hope. I say, don't worry. Allah will forgive you. But even if Allah forgives me, I have to stand before Allah. What hasn't Allah done for me? And how am I going to answer and account for what I did not do or what I was uh, supposed to do? So verbal dhikr is there. And Allah says, Allah wants us to excessively remember him. When it comes to salah, when it comes to other acts of ibadah, Allah doesn't talk about excessiveness. But when it comes to dhikr, Allah talks about excessiveness. And verbal dhikr keeps the name of Allah alive. It keeps the world functioning. As long as there's someone saying, Allah, Allah, Qiyamah will not take place. It's easy. You can continue driving. You can continue working. You can continue cooking. And I like it when people have a, 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 a tasbih in their hands or a tasbih counter. Because then subconsciously you just carry on. You carry on and you're getting the reward. So you're doing whatever you need to do. But the dhikr is going on. 
Um, the name of Allah is being taken. It's a nourishment for your soul. Taking the name of Allah, uh, it brings a lot of barakah into your, into your life, into your body, into your, into your routine. But we should not suffice on that. That's the point I'm making. We should go beyond that. Now, having made that point, that the ultimate is that a believer must be mindful of Allah every second of his life, in every circumstance, at every juncture, and that is a true dhakir, one who remembers Allah. I want to just mention uh, you know, a few things around three key areas, which are not generally considered to be part of dhikr and, and remembrance of Allah, but in reality they are. The first is salah. In Surah Taha, when Allah gave uh, Nubuwa to Musa alayhi salam, when he brought him to the top of the mountain and gave him Nubuwa, he said, La ilaha illa ana fa'budni. There is none worthy of worship besides me, so worship me. Wa aqim is salata li dhikri. And then establish salah for my remembrance. Establish salah for my remembrance. Now, salah is a topic all of its own, right? But what I'm going to say is that this Ramadan, let's take a few resolutions. And then the intention is to work on it in Ramadan, but to continue to work on it beyond Ramadan. One is to improve the quality of our salah. If you're not performing salah, the first step, obviously, is to start performing salah. But if you are, the quality, I'm standing in front of Allah. I'm standing in front of Allah. I have to remember to be mindful. I have to remember to be focused. I have to remember to be disciplined. The second advice I always give to people, and there are multiple benefits to this, uh, it will help you with your time management. It will help you with many things, is develop your routine around salah. Develop your routine around salah. Don't have a, a schedule for the day and try and gap in the salah here and there. Your entire schedule must be drawn around salah. Salah is, is so pivotal, right, that uh, even modern-day writers, like, for example, Jonathan Fields, he has written that um, people in the very top city of the world that we live in, you need stabilizing factors. And stabilizing factors are normally to be found in that which gives you routine. And there's nothing better to give you routine than Salah. Um, Robin Sharma has written a book called The 5 AM Club. And he talks about people from various backgrounds who are achievers. And they had one quality in common. They were all up and running by 5 o'clock in the morning. Their day had started. If you respond to the Muaddin saying, As-salatu khayrun minan nawm, you're part of the club. Right, give or take, depending on season and depending on where you are in the world, but you're part of the club. Now, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has encouraged us that the greater barakah Allah is put in the early part of the morning. So you do your exercise, you read your ishraq, you get going, um, and you, you maximize on the early hours of the morning. Greater barakah, that you get a lot of work done. It's the most productive part of the day. Then Dhahar comes, you're already tiring. So the masjid pulls you in, refreshes you, re-energizes you, pushes you out. Asr time comes in, now that's the last few laps before the end of the working day. You re-energized with your salah. Maghrib, you start winding down your day with salah. Isha, you close your day with salah, with remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala. So that's the first of the three tips that I will give you, that if you want to become one who is mindful of Allah, which is the ultimate, all the time in your life, get your salah in order because salah is a form of dhikr. The second is dua. Dua, unfortunately, is, is become very ritualistic in our lives. After Salah, the Imam lifts up his hands, we lift up our hands, we make dua. Khatmul Quran, 27th night, funeral, we make dua, we cry a few tears. Dua is about talking to Allah. Dua is about communicating with Allah. And when you talk to Allah, you're remembering Allah. When you're communicating with Allah, you're remembering Allah. You need to talk to Allah in good times, so your, your, your voice is familiar to the people in the heavens, to the angels. They'll respond much more speedily and effectively uh, when they hear your voice. Uh, in, in, in difficult times, Allah says, your voice is familiar to the people of the heavens when you make dua in good times. Allah says, I'm near to the thoughts of my servant as he thinks about me and I'm with him as he remembers me. So dua is ibadah. Because in ibadah, you humble yourself in front of Allah. In dua, you're humbling yourself in front of Allah because you're telling Allah, that oh Allah, I can't do for myself. Even if it's a shoelace, I have to ask you. And Allah loves that. It's the essence of dua. Look at the mercy of Allah. You have a need. You ask Allah. Allah rewards you for asking him apart from the fact that he fulfills your need. Whether it's immediate or later, whether he gives it to you in the form that you desire or in a different form. But Allah gives it to you in some way or the other. If not in this world, then it, as, as a reward in the year after. So that's the, the, the second part. That I am that the dua is a great dhikr. Salah, dua. The third, Quran. Allah himself refers to it as a dhikr in the famous verse of the Quran, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun, that we have revealed this dhikr, this remembrance, and we are the protectors. We are the protectors of the remembrance. The remembrance is the Quran. Allah has protected the Quran. We need to use Ramadan as an opportunity to develop a daily and a comprehensive relationship with the Quran. 
You may not be able to do as much outside of Ramadan as you do in Ramadan, but you need to be constant. Now, when I say a holistic relationship with the Quran, we mean read Quran, listen to recitation of Quran. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go to Sahaba and say, read for me, Abu Musa Ash'ari, Abdullah ibn Masood. They would say, Ya Rasulullah, but the Quran was revealed to you. Why must, how can we read for you? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, I like to listen to others also recite. So read, recite. The third thing is that improve your, your pronunciation. To have a fancy voice or to read in a fancy tune is not compulsory. Uh, voice is out of your control. You know, it's what Allah has blessed you with. But to read the Quran with the proper pronunciation is compulsory. Even if you're old, even if you're stuck in your old way of reading, you have to fix how you read. And the ulama, the hafaz will help you without seeking, you know, any compensation for it. So make an effort in that regard because like we want to beautify everything else in life, we want to beautify our homes, we want to beautify our cars, we must beautify our recitation. It's the kalam of Allah. We owe it to Allah. The, the fourth thing is the meaning of the Quran. We have this misunderstanding that the Quran, the meaning of the Quran is only for the scholars. No. Interpretation of the Quran is for the scholars. Meaning of the Quran is for every one of us. The Quran is Allah's love letter to humanity. How is it we can live an entire life not knowing the message? When there are so many authentic books endorsed by our scholars with easy to understand English language, when there are halakas and there are programs of tafsir taking place, when the internet is so full of, of, of rich, authentic content, we have no excuse. They say the Quran is the only book that no matter where you read it, the author is present. And I add on a line and I say, the Quran is the only book that no matter who you are, the author loves you. You can read a book, you can be fascinated by it, you can be obsessed by it. When you meet the author one day, if you meet him, he wouldn't care two hoots about you. Um, he wrote the book for his own purposes and agendas. Uh, but Allah loves the one who reads the book. Allah loves the one. And Allah is present wherever you may be. So a holistic relationship with the Quran. Read, listen, improve your recitation, connect with the meaning. Practice upon the teachings of the Quran. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Quran exemplified. He would, um, he, he, would, he, would, he would manifest the teachings of the Quran in his words and actions. And lastly, pass on the message of the Quran, whether it be to your own children, to your neighbors, to your colleagues. So that's a holistic relationship. And it must be daily. When, when, when the Quran is part of your daily life, there'll be greater barakah. I spoke earlier on about the mobile device. Look, you can have the best mobile phone. You can have a paid up subscription with the network. The network coverage in the area can be strong, but until you don't switch on the device, you're not part of the network. When you switch it on, you can take calls, you can make calls, you can take messages, you can make send messages. It's a whole world that you're connected to. The Quran Allah says, it's like a hope hanging from the heavens. I have latched onto the one part, you latch onto the other part, and you have a direct connection with Allah. A network that never drops and never charges you. Look, in conclusion, I've said the following, that... The ultimate dhikr is to be mindful of Allah at every juncture in your life. Um, three things that are dhikr in itself can help us to do that. Salah, dua, and Quran, and I elaborated on that. Allah issues a warning, just to conclude. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ If you don't remember Allah, if you're not mindful of Allah in your life in general, Allah will make the devil your companion, and then he will be, make you mindful of other things. Allah cautions us, you live in a very tempting world. Do not let your, your, your children, your family, and your wealth divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Dhikr is what distinguishes those who truly live from those who are alive physically but are dead spiritually. Dhikr can bring a lot of barakah in your other efforts. You know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's daughter Fatima radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, give me a helper. I have too many chores at home. The famous incident, uh, I need someone to help me. He said, Fatima, I don't have anybody to, to give you, to help you. But read, subhanAllah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times, Allah 34 times, just become known as the Tasbih Fatima. Now, have you ever thought she's asking for physical help? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling her to recite something. But you see, his dhikr gives you spiritual energy. And spiritual energy then compensates for the lack of physical and emotional energy. And that's why Allah says, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al it is only when you truly remember Allah verbally in your heart, in your mind, at every juncture in your life that you will find happiness, true happiness, through contentment. Uh, because as Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ You remember me and I will remember you. And if Allah remembers you, then you are fortunate in this world as well as in the after. May Allah grant us all the tawfiq. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدْ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ لِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ أَخِي مَحْمُودَ And to all the brothers uh, at uh, Hidayah and this, this wonderful initiative on Barakah and, and Dhikr and Remembrance.
it was lovely to be part of it shukran jazakallah khair ahsan al jaza sheikh for your kind words and for your thought provoking uh, and inspiring words allah reward you immensely for your um, for your part and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with more success in the dunya and the akhirah jazakumullah khair jaza assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you thank you very much that was sheikh suleiman rawat from south africa who um, reminded us again about the importance of dhikr and how we can maximize Ramadan and benefit from uh, dhikr. Um, <clears throat> Our next guest is going to be, again, from South Africa, a very well-known face, a very well-known personality who has long-standing history with Al-Hidayah Foundation, a very close dear friend, uh, Qari uh, Ziad Patel Saab, who will be joining us very shortly. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to remind our viewers and participants to uh, to like and subscribe our uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels, and uh, to um, to watch daily live tarawih from the evening uh, on our YouTube channel, and also to um, keep keep following us for further updates and further programs, and also. Um, this is a very important time of the year. Spiritually speaking, Ramadan is the most important time uh, in the calendar in terms of uh, achieving and, and accumulating rewards um, and, and preparing ourselves for the Akhirah. So on that note, um, I would ask and I would um, encourage people to give as much sadaqat and as as much as they can in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month this is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the scales of <coughs> of the rewards a person gets for uh, a good deed and and so on this on this uh, uh, on this note i would like to uh, invite you to um, spend in the way of Allah and and if if possible, to uh, participate in um, helping Al Hidayah Foundation with um, uh, with our car park project, which is live and ongoing, and it is almost completing, uh, coming to completion. Um, similarly, we have uh, issues around the world where a lot of the Muslim brothers and sisters are suffering in various ways around the world. I would like you to uh, take a moment and see if you can help them as well this is one of the most important lessons of fasting fasting provides us the time and also the opportunity to reflect and to think about uh, people who are less fortunate than ourselves and it it, it forces us and it, it propels us to uh, act in ways that are beneficial for them take a shot, break. Take a shot. Hmm? Take a shot. So uh, at this moment in time, inshallah, I will be taking a short break just before Qari Ziyad Sab comes on. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay. We will come to you again in another zone. In a very, very, very short time. I, 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 I
Thank you. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Uh, Kali Sab, uh, we're waiting for you to uh, join the uh, live, inshallah. I've sent you the link. Uh, you send me the link, that'll be all in two minutes, inshallah. Okay, no problem, inshallah. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, alhamdulillah, we are joined by Kari Ziyad Patel Saab from South Africa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kari Saab, how are you? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We are happy and we are proud to have Kari Ziyad Patel Saab join us live from South Africa. I'm just uh, going to go live with uh, a program share quickly, inshallah, in the UK, inshallah. Mm. Can, you sub, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you sub? Can you hear us? See if you got a microphone here. Yeah. Allah barakatuh, Kari Sab. I got a small program in UK. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kari Sab, it's excellent to see you again. And uh, alhamdulillah, we are so, so proud and so honored to have you on board. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you and and, and inshallah benefit from you inshallah jazakallah khair wa ahsan jaza mawlana mahmood it's always an honor and a pleasure to see you and i miss all my family down in kifli mashallah uh, we have been kept apart for a very long time because of the covid but nevertheless our hearts will always be close you know we have a very 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 special bond with the al hidayah mashallah you know and we 
there from the very, 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 very beginning, ever since the, the center had started. And Alhamdulillah, it's coming to a beautiful fruition. And uh, so many people are taking benefit from this. And uh, to all the viewers out there, all the listeners out there, we say to every one of you, uh, let's 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 look at Al Hidayah very 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 closely. Give them all the support, and let's take complete benefit from everything uh, that Al Hidayah is doing. MashaAllah. So Alhamdulillah, as I speak to you before I get into the Qira and the Nasheed, as I'm speaking to you, I'm here in Cape Town. I'm in a very very impoverished area. In fact, a very very dangerous area. This is the the, the gangsterism uh, capital uh, of the country. It's a very, 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 very dangerous area. But nevertheless, Alhamdulillah, Allah has made it such uh, that we will conduct this program from this area. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are in a bit of a safe zone, but this is the gangster capital of the country. And if you perhaps hear a few gunshots here and there, uh, it's just part of the norm. It's completely part of the norm. May Allah Ta'ala protect us and keep us well. Uh, so, Mawlana, whenever you give me the go-ahead, I'm already inshallah. here, Inshallah. Inshallah. Now, Mawlana, Kaisa, let's go for it, Inshallah. Thank you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تتوع خيرا فهو خير له شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَا فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا 
Alhamdulillah, I've been requested to recite a short nasheed and I think my time is lapsing very, very, very quickly. So quickly we will recite a nasheed in the remembrance of Allah as this entire webinar has been captioned, the remembrance of Allah. So we will do something in the remembrance of Allah, inshallah. Ameen. Hasmi Rabbi Jallallah Ma fi qalbi Ayyullah Nur Muhammad Sallallah La ilaha illallah Hasmi Rabbi Jallallah Ma fi qalbi Ayyullah نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله أول آخر يا الله أول آخر يا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله الرحمن الرحيم يا الله الرحمن الرحيم يا الله يا الله 
حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله الظاهر الباطن يا الظاهر الباطن يا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله الخافض الرافع يا الله الخافض الرافع يا الله يا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله Zakla khairun wa ahsan jaza. We thank each and every one of you. May Allah Ta'ala Azza wa Jalla accept. And uh, to the entire team in Kifli, UK, Al Hidayah, Barakallahu Feek, Zakla khairun Maran Mahmood and your team. Thank you, Jazakallah Karisa, for this uh, inspiring recitation. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless you. And as always, you're welcome to come to Kifli. We're looking forward for that time again. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala keep you safe in this dangerous neighborhood. And inshallah, we hope to see you soon, very soon in the UK, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Amin, amin. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to our viewers viewers again. We are now moving on to our next guest. Our next guest is uh, he is well known uh, as the founder and director of National Hufad Association, our partner organization for this event. He read the Qur'an in various places, including in Egypt and Morocco. And he is currently Imam at the London Islamic uh, Cultural Society in North, North London. And he has recently authored uh, the book 365 Tips to help you memorize the Qur'an. So we are happy and very, very proud to have him on board. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, welcome to this program. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wana Mahmoud, how are you? Okay? Alhamdulillah, good, mashallah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. No, 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 it's a pleasure. And uh, mashallah, we go back many years. Al Hidayah Foundation is, mashallah, an organization close to my heart. Whenever I come to Yorkshire, I cannot uh, I come to Yorkshire without visiting Al Hidayah Foundation. You've hosted us many times before, and uh, we're proud to support this organization and uh, very honored to be here among such a lineup of esteemed guests. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. The, the platform is yours, uh, so you take it on from there. Jazakallah khair. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
لا أقول سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر أحب إلي مما طلعت عليه الشمس أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والتسليم وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم مشكروا لي ولا تكفرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا يزيد الظالمين إلا خسارة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب الشح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يقه قولي صدق الله العظيم my dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with the greetings of peace and we send salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and inshallah, we pray that this program is beneficial for you all. Alhamdulillah, I am very fortunate and honored to be speaking at this uh, first online conference titled Barakah, Remembrance of Allah. No doubt uh, such, subhanAllah, knowledgeable guests, more knowledgeable than me, have appeared before you and have shared some enlightening words of wisdom. Um, I would like to focus on really and truly um, the essence of dhikr. So I would like to focus on 10 ways to remember Allah in our busy schedules. So 10, 10 tips to remember Allah in our busy schedules. And Allah says in the Quran, as I recited earlier in Surah Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ مَشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ This is such a powerful verse. Now if we reflect and ponder over this verse, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ If you remember me, I will remember you. This is a beautiful verse from Allah saying to us, O oh mankind, O oh my slaves, if you remember me, I will remember you. And subhanAllah, whenever I reflect on this verse, it always makes me feel like we have a personal connection with Allah. The Quran is such a beautiful book. Whenever we read the Quran, it can hit you in many ways at different moments in your time. SubhanAllah, whether you're feeling down, you're feeling happy, etc. The Quran is one of the best forms of dhikr. So if we truly want to live a life that is filled with peacefulness and barakah, we should strive to put the remembrance of Allah first in our lives, no matter what. I know that the speakers have already covered some important topics. Every single a'mal, every act that we do, we should constantly strive to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tip number one, make the use of technology to gain beneficial knowledge. And I say this because we are living at a time where technology is so commonly used. This program Program itself is being streamed live on YouTube. We are using technology to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to connect one another with the remembrance of Allah. So instead of tuning the radio at the moment when you're sitting in the car, for example, we sometimes listen to, for example, we have talk sport in the UK, we have uh, radios, for, for example, whether you're in London or Cape Town, whichever city you're from, we generally put the radio on and we listen to the news or we want to listen to maybe the, the latest events, what's happening around around the world. So especially in the month of Ramadan, whilst you're in the car especially, or whether you're commuting by train or bus, whichever mode of transport you're using, always try to make a habit of listening to the Quran or listening to an Islamic lecture or even listen to the dhikr of Allah. And better still, even if you utter the words, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar, many types of azkar, many types of verses from the Quran where you can remember Allah. So. The main point I wanted to focus on from this first tip is to use technology, not just when you're commuting, but generally speaking, even our gadgets, our mobile phones. I mean, let's be honest, how many of us actually use our phones on a daily basis to make dhikr of Allah? How many of us actually read through a hadith? How many of us listen to Islamic lectures? How many of us actually listen to Quran? So using your gadget for the right reasons can really help you as well. And subhanAllah, nowadays there's so many online courses where you can, subhanAllah, you can learn about the fiqh, you can learn about hadith, you can learn about tafsir. There's so many avenues of learning through technology. So the second tip I wanted to focus on in regards to the remembrance of Allah, is reading an ayah of the Qur'an a day. So notice that we haven't said a juice, we haven't said a page, we haven't said a ruku. Now everybody has different levels of concentration, different levels of knowledge. Some people 
can pray one page in one minute. Some people can recite one khatm of the Quran every day in Ramadan. Some people struggle to read a quarter, maybe, or one juz, it takes them an hour and 15 minutes or maybe more. But really and truly, we should try to incorporate the recitation of the Quran daily. I mean, there's so many apps. There's like the Quran Pro, there's Tartil, there's Quran Hive. There's many apps where if you set a notification on your phone and a verse of the quran will appear on your phone every day subhanallah without you even having to go into the app so make a daily habit of starting your day with recitation of the quran and build a relationship slowly and steadily and try reciting at the very least at least one ayah a day and there's a very beautiful verse i wanted to focus on from surah muzammil in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ So Allah is referring to the companions in this verse and this can also relate to us as well that when they would look at Allah, when they would remember Allah, when they would recite the Qur'an وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ and their hearts would become soft وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ and the iman would increase subhanallah so when they would iman would increase زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ and Allah is always pleased with those people whose hearts are connected with Him. So when we read the Quran or when we think of Allah, does our iman increase? Does you know? Does our hearts yearn for more dhikr of Allah? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud states that once the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, and this is a hadith in Tirmidhi as well, whoever reads one letter from the book of Allah will, work, will earn one hasanat, one reward. And one reward is equal to ten rewards, the like of it. And I do not say... Alif Lam Mim Harfun, the Alif Lam Mim is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. And subhanAllah, this hadith, it, it makes one feel so much hope that how many letters do we recite when we finish one khatm of the Quran? How many letters do we actually go through? And how much of the Quran do we recite every day? So imagine every letter you get 10 rewards and you calculate, we can't comprehend how much rewards we get from reciting this even one khatm of the Quran. So let's make it a daily habit, especially after Ramadan, to recite at least a minimum of one verse of the Quran. And I don't say just recite, but to, to make tadabbur. Allah says in the Quran, who is there to ponder over the Quran? We must always reflect and ponder. When we reflect over the verses of the Quran, we become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because really and truly, this is the kalam Allah. This is the book that Allah has given us. And one of the rights of the Quran is that we should be understanding the Quran. And for those of you who cannot recite the Quran fluently, don't worry. Everybody starts somewhere. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the effort that you are making. So this is very important. So when we struggle to recite the Quran, you get even more rewards as well. So make sure to try and recite at least one verse of the Quran every day. The third tip is try to always be in the state of wudu. Try to always be in a state of wudu. Now, being in a constant state of wudu is difficult. You know, we um, we break wind, we go to sleep. We find it so difficult to just stay in wudu for just one hour or maybe just from Dhuhr to Asr, for example. But when you're conscious of the remembrance of Allah, it helps you to stay, uh, you know, uh, motivated and it helps you stay afloat in terms of going to the next salah or reciting Quran, picking up the Quran and reciting. It makes it easier for you to perform salah at any time and you get reward for remaining wudu as well. I remember Abu Hari anhu makes a mention of this and this is mentioned uh, in Sahih Muslim as well that the Prophet Sallallahu once said, should I not direct you to something by which Allah obliterates the sins and elevates your rank and they said, Ya Rasulullah Please tell us. And he said, performing wudu properly, even in difficulty, frequently going to the masjid and waiting eagerly for the next salah after a salat is over. Indeed, that is our ribat. And besides getting rewarded performing wudu, it also helps us to stay clean and refreshed throughout the day and definitely keeps us energized as well. And you know, many of my friends, non-Muslim friends that I interact with, they always say to me, you know, you Muslims, you know, you, you wash yourselves five times a day or you shower five times a day. But really and truly making a it has so many health benefits, but spiritually it can make you energized and it can really keep you awake and keep you motivated to continue doing even more good deeds. So definitely 
something we should all strive to do is to remain in the state of wudu. Now just imagine, for example, if your eyes close, subhanAllah, you say, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya, and you're about to go to sleep, and you just say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you, for your soul to be taken out at night time. And imagine you go to sleep in a state of wudu, subhanAllah. Who would not want to be resurrected on a day of qiyamah in a state of wudu? And remember, the last act that you do in this world before you pass away is how you will be resurrected in the next life. So always be in a state of wudu, always be in a state of ablution. So you not only you are clean externally, but internally as well. And it makes it very difficult for you not to pray salah when you know you got wudu. Um, sometimes you procrastinate and I myself included, sometimes I find it very hard to, to make wudu at times when you know you have to pray and you, you say, oh, I'll make wudu later. Sometimes just having to make wudu will make it difficult for you to pray salah as well. So it can be a barrier for you to pray salah at the correct times or at, you know, and not pray at a delayed time. So having wudu does have benefits to keep you more effective as well in your salah. Tip number four is to plan your life around your prayers. Planning your daily life around your salah. And this can mean many things. Some of you probably watching, you might be having, uh, you might have a very busy schedule, a very hectic schedule. But remember, when you pray salah, your whole life becomes full of barakah. And have you ever felt that you've rushed to do your salah because your time's almost up? I'm sure we've been there before. I'm sure we've just crammed that asr salah two minutes before maghrib or five minutes before maghrib or we've just woken up from a deep sleep and we're going to get late for fajr or there's maybe five or ten minutes left before sunrise and you just cram that salah in. So rather than cramming your salah in, rather than rushing your salah, you know, pace yourself. You know, every day the Salah times changes. We know uh, Salat al-Fajr or Salat al -Isha. Every Salah time is different every day according to which country or city you are around the world. But knowing what times the Salah are, are very important. So even if you have an app on your phone, if that helps you to manage your daily prayers, then so be it. I think now even the Google Calendar, there's ways to even uh, merge your local prayer times in your mosque into your Google Calendar or to your phones. So... And this is very important. And compare that to a day when you're actually praying just at the same time for prayer, things, seem, things seem, seem to go more smoothly and you feel like you've got more time to spare to do other things. And imagine if you're going to an interview, if you've prepared for your interview and you, you reach at your interview, for example, half an hour before, you're most likely to be calm, composed, say the correct things, take your time when you're speaking and generally you'll be more relaxed. This is a similar attitude when we pace ourselves and we plan our salah, we can become generally more relaxed and you'll be more positive mind frame when you're about to pray salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, have you ever noticed how, you know, do we ever feel bad that we're rushing? Rushing for who? Rushing to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, was asked by a sahabi, which deed is the dearest to Allah? And he sallallahu alayhi wa replied, to offer prayers at the early stated fixed times. And this is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari as well. So to offer your salah at your fixed times, there are loads of benefits to planning your day. We just mentioned, and after all, what does the adhan say? Hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah. Come to prayer, come to success. Already being in the state of wudu, as we mentioned previously, definitely helps and more importantly the obligation of the day has been fulfilled remember salah is not optional for us allah did not say to us you know what it's up to you you can pray five times you can pray three times yes we are all at different levels of concentration we all are different levels of iman some of us find it difficult to pray three times a day but not to worry Perfect your free time daily prayers and then gradually go to four and five. Don't panic. Inshallah, if eventually you will perfect a five times daily prayer timetable. And this comes with years of practice and experience, inshallah. The fifth tips, uh, fifth tip I want to mention in regards to the remembrance of Allah, the theme for today's conference is practicing mindfulness. The simple act of being mindful in your daily actions, it can make a lot of difference in your connection with Allah. So let me give you an example. When you try to re renew your intentions and do it sincerely for the sake of Allah, you will receive much more barakah. And not only will we be more conscious in our actions, we'll be also be gaining reward from the things that we do every, every day. Because as Allah is the most generous and the most merciful. And one of the most important times of the day to be mindful is during your five daily prayers. But who here hasn't been distracted 
by a notification. How many times have you been praying salah and, and that notification keeps on going on or your phone starts to vibrate or you've forgotten to put your phone on silent and you've had to physically get your phone and swipe it so you reject the call. How many of us get notified of social media, emails? How many of us are in salah but we're not mindful of Allah and we're mindful of that meeting or this deadline or that task to do? SubhanAllah, our, our daily lives have been so busy that we are always busy in our salah we fail to be busy remembering allah but we're more busier remembering other things in salah so one important distraction that we always receive is the phone and one way to be more present is by being mindful of allah before coming to prayer so what i would recommend is just by sitting by yourself for maybe five or ten minutes just doing some dhikr just saying allahu akbar or subhanallah alhamdulillah just for five minutes I always tell my students as well that it's, you know, and this is generally um, to actually go for salah slightly earlier so that you are, subhanAllah, much more in a state of reflection and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. So we need to always try to go to salah earlier so that we can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can always, subhanAllah, get the maximum benefit when you pray our salah. And when you go for salah earlier, you become mindful of Allah and you remember Allah even more. The sixth tip is to pick a few du'as or dhikr to focus on Allah and just take five minutes to reflect. So just building on what I just said, just take out five minutes every day maybe switch the lights off in a room or just you know sit in a place of reflection by yourself and just meditate make a daily habit of making dhikr or making dua but the best time is when you're alone maximize your downtime whether you're waiting to catch a flight washing dishes you're stuck in a traffic jam or driving to work or even if you have five minutes to spare before you go for tarawih or before you go to work make it a daily habit in the morning and evening to remember allah even if it's for five minutes and like i mentioned earlier there's many dua apps there's one app I think is called My Dua. There's Muslim Pro, and there's many other types of apps that you can download where automatically there's one that I've got on my phone called Hadith of the Day, which is really good. It actually comes up on my phone without me having to go into the app. The actual Hadith uh, actually comes up as well, inshallah. So this is very important. And we must always make Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the Duas of those who are sincere. The next tip, tip, tip number seven, is to give charity. Now, when we give charity in the month of Ramadan, our deeds are multiplied. We know that when you give charity in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, you know, deeds are multiplied. And once uh, there's a beautiful hadith that comes to mind, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu said, and this is mentioned in Tirmidhi, your smile to your brother is a sadaqah for you. So smiling to someone is a sadaqah for you. You're commanding the right and forbidding the wrong is a sadaqah. You're guiding a man in the land of misguidance is a sadaqah for you. And you're seeing for a man with bad eyesight is a sadaqah for you. Even you're removing a stone or thorn or bone from the road is sadaqah for you. And you're emptying your bucket of water into your brother's empty bucket is sadaqah for you. So practically anything you do for someone, as long as it's going to benefit them, no matter how big or small, charity is very important, especially in Ramadan. We know what is Ramadan. It's Shahul Quran. And also it's, it's a month of charity as well. So when we even smile, just by smiling to your brother or sister, that is an act of sadaqah and it's an act of charity. So don't belittle any act that you do for the sake of Allah. That act could be the one that will guarantee you to go for Jannah. And it's, it's so important because especially in Ramadan, we commit so many we actually commit ourselves to doing so many good deeds but subhanallah we don't know which one of those good deeds are accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we make dua that allah accepts all of our good deeds i mean the eighth tip is surrounding yourself with good company now we're all social creatures be it personal online we like to be with our circle of friends but when you're in the company of people who remind you of allah and strive to be good really does make a positive impact for example if you're with a group of friends and you're out traveling and you're on the motorway you're going somewhere far and say it's time for salat al-asr and just say for example your friends are not inclined to pray salah the the actual reminder would not even come out of their tongues they probably wouldn't even know what time of salah it is and you would struggle to find that time to pray because then you would have to tell them to stop to pray salah if you're with a group of friends who are regularly praying salah you would plan your 
motivate or your traveling time around your salah. So being in good company of those, you don't have to be in a company of someone who's memorized the Quran or just who's a alim. We're not talking about this from a knowledge perspective, we're talking about from a personality perspective. Be with those who have the personality of taqwa, who have the personality of always being conscious of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is thinking of them. And this is very important. So always be mindful of good company. And when you're in good company, inshallah, you will actually follow good deeds. Nowadays, when we're online, we look at Instagram, Facebook, social media. SubhanAllah, how many of us have friends on Facebook that we actually personally know? Do we actually know every single person on your Facebook account or on your Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, whichever social media platform you're on? And, and especially for the youngsters, we follow the wrong crowds of people who take you away from Allah. Follow people who will bring you close to Allah. There's so many, subhanAllah, righteous scholars, so many leaders in our communities who are posting beneficial messages on social media to make you, subhanAllah, to make Islam accessible to the masses. So follow the right people, people who are, subhanAllah, conscious of Allah, people who give good advice and take the good from these people rather than following people who make you go further from Allah. The ninth tip, inshallah, is giving greetings of peace. Now, how many times have you smiled when you spot another Muslim whilst traveling in a foreign country? Let me give you one personal example. When we go for Hajj or Umrah, how many times have you prayed Salah in the Haram in Mecca or Medina? And to your right, after you do Salam, you look, there's someone from a country that you maybe not have met before. And on the left, you've met someone who's from another country. It's happened to me so many times where I've met, subhanAllah, people from diverse countries. And what Allah say in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqanakum min dhakaru wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ayla la ta'ara. We have created you from tribes so you may know one another, different colors, different ethnicities, different backgrounds. So as we said before, smiling is sadaqah. When you smile and you say, Assalamu alaikum, you're remembering Allah, you're giving the greetings of peace. And just by saying salam to someone, it could, it may even be a good deed that Allah loves so much that could guarantee you Jannah. And Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu anhu once reported, and again, this hadith is in Tirmidhi as well. He heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, Oh people, exchange greetings of peace i.e. say assalamu alaikum to one another feed people strengthen the ties of kinship and be in prayer when others are asleep and you will enter jannah in peace and who doesn't want to have you know the word said to them you know dakhul al jannah you know enter jannah and allah says in the quran you know we say salam when people enter jannah so make it a habit to do as many good deeds as you can and the last and final tip before i conclude is having gratitude every day it's no big secret that people who are grateful tend to be happier individuals and i say this wallahi i've seen people close to me in my life who are so subhanallah they make so much shukr of allah for every small thing that they have in their life how many times have you woken up instead of checking your bank account and feeling you know proud that you have this much money in your account how many times have you actually said to yourself alhamdulillah allah i thank you for giving me the risk allah i thank you for giving me my mother or my father oh allah i thank you for everything every barakah that you giving for me in my life we need to be people of shukr we need to constantly make gratitude and isn't it amazing that allah has already told us this in the quran this was revealed more than 1400 years ago and as i mentioned earlier from the quran we will say if you remember me i will remember you and we should always thank allah and allah says in the quran in chapter 14 verse 7 if you are grateful i will surely increase you in favor but if you deny Indeed, my punishment is severe. And I want to, you know, really conclude. Um, I know Sheikh uh, Yunus is waiting as well, inshallah. I want to conclude by saying, um, dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah should be natural to us. We shouldn't have to force ourselves to think of Allah. When we meet someone, we think of Allah. When we pray, when we go to work, we should think of Allah. When we go on the train, we think of Allah. Every single act that we do in our life, Allah should be at the forefront of everything. And as we know, the famous hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a'malu min Every deed is judged according to the sincerity of its intention. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept our good deeds. May Allah enable us to always be in the remembrance of Allah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always enable us to be close to him and to always thank him for everything that he's given us wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakallah karisa for these uh, tips and for these uh, practical advice 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely Amen. for your time and your effort Amen. and Amen. accept it from you and give us all the tawfiq to practice upon what has been said. Jazakumullah khair ahsan al jazak. Uh, our next guest is uh, Sheikh Yunus Dudwala Sab. Uh, Sheikh Yunus is the head of chaplaincy and bereavement services at Bart's uh, Health NHS Foundation uh, Trust. He's um, uh, located in one of the most diverse uh, population wise uh, area of the. Uh, he has also served as Imam in Seven Kings and East Ham. And he has also served as a uh, chaplaincy at Belmash Prison. He is originally from uh, Blackburn and a graduate of Bra uh, Darlun Berry and Al Azhar University, Cairo. Jazakallah, Ahsan Jazakallah, Sheikh, uh, for joining us and and, uh, and, and, and and being part of this event today. We, uh, we appreciate your time and your efforts. Jazakallah for having me. Um, ha have you got me on screen? Um, is my camera on? We don't seem to have you on the screen, Sheikh. I think you need to put your webcam on. It was on. One second. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa man ittaba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-Din. Amma ba'd. Fa'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Shahr ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Hudan lil-Nasi wa bayinat min al-Huda wa al-Furqan. Wa qala ta'ala law anzalna hadha al-Qur'ana ala jabalin la ra'aytahu khashi'an mutasaddi'an min khashyatillah. Wa qala ta'ala utlu ma uuhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa aqimi s-salah. Wa qala al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fadlu kalamillah ala sa'ir al-kalam ka fadlillah ala khalqih. O kama qala alayhi s-salatu wa s-salam. Sadaq Allahu al-Azim wa sadaq Rasuluhu al-Nabiyu al-Kareem. ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Respected viewers, brothers, sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. First of all, let me thank the organizers, the Baraka found the foundation, Al Hidayah Foundation, and this first Baraka conference. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى put lots of Baraka in this conference, and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى make it beneficial for each and every one of us, including myself. The topic today we are discussing is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. That it is only through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts will become tranquil, the hearts will find peace. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows us better than anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is closest to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us. Who knows us better. And he knows the features of this human being. He knows the characters of this human being. He knows what will pain him, what will pain her, what will affect him, what will affect her. And what will be good for them as well? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorically states in the Quran, Allah bi dhikrillah, know and be aware that it is only through the dhikr of Allah that your heart will find peace and tranquility. Your heart will find peace and tranquility. And, you know, we try and find peace everywhere. And unfortunately, you know, some people... They resort to alcohol to try and drown their sorrows. Some people resort to drugs to drown their sorrows and to find the mind to try and make the mind clouded so that it doesn't think about the problems that they have. But all these are not solutions. They are not real solutions. In fact, if we look at today, how people are looking for solutions they have now started meditating. They have started um, mindfulness within workplaces. Mindfulness 
is taking some time out and reflecting on yourself. What is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All these are very, very similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us. Our salah is mindfulness. Our dhikr is mindfulness. But it is the mindfulness that is being promoted by the West at the moment is void of the creator of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas our salah and our dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembering our creator who in our hearts we need. Our ulama and our scholars teach us that we are uh, created external and internal. The external body needs food and drink. And the food and drink is the one which is supposed to be halal. And we are supposed to make sure that whatever we eat is halal and it will nourish us and it will help our bodies. But then we are also made out of a ruh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he is the one who blew the ruh. وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And this ruh comes in each and every one of us. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ruh. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created this ruh. This external body was created from clay, was created from the soil, from the mud. And that's why we need food that comes from the soil, that comes from the mud, that comes from the ground. And when it comes to the ruh, the ruh is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way the ruh will find peace is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our bodies, they're created from the soil. We need food and drink from the soil. And our ruh is created from Allah. We need the dhikr of Allah to find peace in our hearts. To find peace in our hearts. And that is why we find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every aspect of life taught us du'as, taught us du'as, taught us supplications. And these supplications are found in the books of hadith and there are many books which mention these supplications. And these supplications will help us to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. So, my message to each and every one of you today is learn the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was constantly in dhikr, constantly in dhikr. And that is why whenever he used to do anything, there used to be a dua. So for example, we know the dua that when you even going into the toilet, even going into the toilet. Now, which religion, Allahu Akbar, which religion, which ideology would teach someone to read a dua and a supplication before going into the toilet? But it is only our beloved Prophet Wasallam, And this is one of the signs of prophethood to me, that even an action like relieving oneself the Prophet Sallallahu taught us an adu'a and when one of the companions was mocked about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said proudly that my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is someone who has taught us everything, even how we go to the toilet as well, he has taught us. He, even how we go to the toilet, he has taught us. How we sit down when we go to the toilet, he has taught us. This is something to be proud of, not something to be ashamed of. And the Prophet Sallallahu when he used to enter into the toilet, he used to read the dua, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal khabaith. He used to take the name of Allah before he used to go and believe himself. In the name of Allah. And then he used to ask for protection from shayateen. Because the, where there is filth and where there is impurity, it is where the shayateen and the jinn hang out. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu always used to ask for protection from the shayateen and the, the harmful elements that might be around those impurities. But also, 
when the Prophet ﷺ, when he used to come out of the toilet, the Prophet ﷺ also used to make a dua. And in that dua, the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Ghufranak, Ghufranak, Alhamdulillahi alladhi adhaba annil adha wa'afani. Ghufranak, Alhamdulillahi alladhi adhaba annil adha wa'afani. Allahu Akbar. When you think of the meanings of every single dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Shaykh Mufti Muhammad Taqi sahab Damad Barakatum al-Aliyah has done a whole series of talks on the duas of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which are very very beneficial in his discourses but when you look at them each and every dua is an amazing manifestation of the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ghufranak I seek forgiveness. I seek your forgiveness. Number one. And then, Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba annil adha wa afani. Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba annil adha wa afani. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for relieving the difficulty and the pain that he had within his stomach. Now, sometimes we don't have any pain. But what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and obviously we're not saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had pain every time he used to go to the toilet. What this dua was telling us that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not remove what is in our bodies and we had constipation, then we would have taklif, we would have pain, we would be in difficulty, we would have we would be in trouble, we would have to go to the doctors, we would have to have some tablets, we would have to uh, go to visit the hospital. But amazing that the Prophet sallallahu taught us a dua for going into the toilet taught us a dua for coming out of the toilet and the other point that I wanted to mention here is on ghufranak and this shows us how much dhikr the Prophet sallallahu used to make the Prophet sallallahu when he used to come out of the toilet he used to read the dua ghufranak alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba anni al-adha wa afani uh, and he used to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for relieving the pain and for giving him good health. But at the beginning, he used to say, Ghufran, Ghufran, me, I seek your forgiveness. The ulama in commentating on this hadith and this dua, they say that the Prophet wasallam used to ask for forgiveness before, after he came out of the toilet. Now, why, would, why was the Prophet wasallam asking for forgiveness? And the ulama have mentioned this amazing point. And they say that the Prophet ﷺ was constantly in the state of dhikr. Every single moment of his life, under his breath or verbally, he is making and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only place that he could not make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in the toilet. The only place that the Prophet ﷺ could not make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in the toilet. And therefore, the Prophet وسلم, when he used to come out of the toilet, the Prophet وسلم, used to ask for forgiveness. Ghufranak. What does that tell us? It tells us that a believer should also be constantly in the state of dhikr. We must always be in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether under our breath, Allah, 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 Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Or whether doing it uh, physically in a, in a place where you're remembering and you're taking some time out, uh, whether it's Salah or whether it's Quran or whether it's Dhikr. That is one form of Dhikr. And one is just to be constantly in the form of, in the state of Dhikr. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ghufranak. We, I seek your forgiveness, O Allah. I seek your forgiveness, O Allah. And because he was, that was the only place that he could not make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I mentioned, one of the ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly is to read the du'as. When you come into the home, you make dua, you read the dua of entering the home. Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa allahi rabbina tawakkalna. That when you leave the home, then you make dua. Remember the dua of which the Prophet ﷺ read when he used to leave his house. When you are eating, you say bismillahi wa ala barakatillah. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you finished, when you are eating, 
Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukr. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for every ni'mah that he has given us in terms of eating and drinking. After eating, alhamdulillah alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana min al-muslimin. Every single dua, wherever you are, in whatever state you are, if you keep on praying all these duas, how many times you will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day? Every time you eat, you will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you are eating, so every time you begin to eat, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you are eating, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After eating, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are leaving your home, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are entering the home, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you enter the toilet, you are remembering Allah. When you come out of the toilet, you are remembering Allah. When you are praying salah, you are remembering Allah. All these different actions that you are doing, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the messages today is if you have never learned the du'as, majority of the children who go to the maktabs, alhamdulillah, they are taught these du'as. But unfortunately, they don't practice those du'as. So by the time they leave the maktab, they forget these du'as. The whole purpose of learning these du'as in the maktab and madrasa is so that they come into our lives and we are constantly in the state of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So learn the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for every action that he used to do. That's number one. And number two, this is a month of the Qur'an. And we must be reading lots of Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. But outside the month of Ramadan, as Sheikh Suleiman Mullah says, uh, one of the very eloquent uh, orators and speakers in South Africa, a good friend of ours, he always says that the Qur'an is not for the shelf. The Qur'an is for the self. The Qur'an is not for the shelf. The Qur'an is for the self. So yes, alhamdulillah, we pick up the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And we pick up the Qur'an when somebody dies and we you know, take off the dust of the Qur'an. But the Qur'an is not for this. The Qur'an is supposed to be a regular feature in our lives. Every single day, we should be reciting the Qur'an. Every single day, we should be reciting the Qur'an. And there are certain surahs that we have been taught that if you read them, they will benefit us. So not only will the Qur'an be a reward for us, every single letter you will receive 10 rewards. Every single letter you will receive 10 rewards. And the Prophet wasallam said, Alif, Lam, Mim is not one letter. Alif is one letter. Lam is one letter. Mim is one letter. You will get 30 rewards for just reading Alif, Lam, Mim. Now sometimes many people ask me, Maulana, you know, um, but I don't understand the Qur'an. So what's the benefit? What's the point of reading the Qur'an? And it's a valid question. But the premise is false. The premise is false. The Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ, his mission and his objective is mentioned in the Qur'an. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ that the Prophet ﷺ was sent to the people for what? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. To teach the recitation of the Quran. To recite the Quran upon us so that we learn how to recite the Quran. Number one. And the second one, wa yu'allimuhum al kitab. So four objectives, two of them are to do with the Quran. One is purification of the heart, one is to teach the hadith and his sayings and wisdom which is uh, referred to as wisdom in the Qur'an. And the other two, one is tilawa and one is ta'lim. Tilawa, recitation of the Qur'an. Read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to you. This is a hukam and the order to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That read. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qum al-layla illa qalila nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila awzid alayhi wa natilil Qur'an tartila. Read the Qur'an, tartil of the Qur'an. So one of the objectives of the Prophet ﷺ was to teach us how to recite the Qur'an. And the second objective is to learn the meaning of the Qur'an. Two separate objectives. So one is not void of the other. If somebody is reciting the Qur'an only, they should never be criticized because that in itself is a reward. And if somebody is learning the meanings of the Qur'an, alhamdulillah, that's also good as well. And we should learn the meanings of the Qur'an. 
We should learn the meanings of the Quran, but do not be in any misunderstanding that to recite the Quran is of no use. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alif Lam Mim, you get 30 rewards. And 1400 years ago, the Prophet ﷺ answered this question that if you can't understand the Quran or if you don't understand the Quran, then why are you reciting the Quran? The Prophet ﷺ, when he gave the example of 30 rewards, he gave the example of Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim is the first uh, verse of Surah Al Baqarah. Similar to other verses, which 29 chapters we start off with letters. Hamim, Ain, Sin, Qaf, Kaf, Haya, Ain, Suhad, Taha. All these Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. All these letters that are starting at the beginning of the chapter. Nobody knows the meaning of these letters. And the example when the Prophet ﷺ gave of the reward for reciting the Quran are these letters. What that means is that whether you understand the Quran or whether you do not understand the Quran, you will get 30 rewards. You will get 10 rewards per letter. 10 rewards per letter. And for Alif Lam Mim, you get 30 rewards. So just imagine just reading one page a day, two pages a day, how much reward you will receive. And these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to connect to his words. Remember, inna anzallahu fi laylatul qadr. We reveal the Quran on laylatul qadr. This Quran is so powerful that Allah says that if we had revealed this Quran on mountains, the mountain would have crumbled. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله because of the fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the mountain would have crumbled. A huge mountain could not take the weight of the Quran. These are the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, and the Quran is so powerful that that night in which the Quran was revealed from لوح محفوظ to the first heaven in one go, that night became so powerful that that night is better than a thousand months. So if that night has become so precious because the Quran was revealed on that night, then just imagine how precious and how valuable you will become if you connect yourselves with the Quran. If you connect yourselves with the Quran, that night became special more than a thousand months better than any other night. Because of the connection of the Quran. Inna anzallahu fi Laylatul Qadr. We revealed the Quran on Laylatul Qadr. Then just imagine how powerful, how valuable you will become if you have a connection with the Quran. If you have a connection with the Quran. So every single day after month of Ramadan, Surah Yasin in the morning. Surah Yasin in the morning. Surah Tabarak al Ladi, 29th Juz, first chapter. In the 29th juz, Tabarak al Biyadih al Mulk, read 29, that surah every evening. Surah Sajda every evening. Surah Waqiyah every evening, evening. Make a timetable of reciting portions of the Quran that are beneficial not only in the hereafter. We'll get the reward of every single letter, 10 rewards. But the Prophet ﷺ mentions that whoever reads Yasin in the morning, their needs will be fulfilled during that day. So it's beneficial for us in the, in the, uh, our dunya as well, in our world as well. Whoever reads Surah Tabarak al after Maghrib Salah, every evening, that Surah will become a protection for them from the punishment of the grave. That Surah will come and protect you. Surah Alif Lam Mim Sajda, Surah Waqiyah, whoever recites Surah Waqiyah on every evening, then inshallah poverty will never come into their homes. So make a plan of recitation of the Quran after the month of Ramadan. Don't let dust gather on the shelf on the Quran. So two key messages today, which I would remind you. Number one is that the dhikr of Allah, just like our bodies need food and nourishment, and we are created from soil. We are created from the uh, ground, from the mud. Similarly, the food comes from there and we have to nourish ourselves and it will keep our bodies strong. Our ruh comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the ruh requires the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. Number two, recite the supplications of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every action, whether it's eating, whether it's after eating, whether it's during eating, whether it's going to the toilet, coming out of the toilet, going into the masjid, coming out of the masjid, coming out of the home, going into the home, coming up the stairs, going down the stairs. All these have supplications from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you start learning and practicing those supplications, you will be constantly in the state of dhikr. And the last point, Quran 
Alhamdulillah, we pray Quran in the month of Ramadan, but don't only leave it for the month of Ramadan. There are many rewards for reciting the Quran. For every single letter, we will receive 10 rewards. But let's make a habit. Let's make a habit, make a timetable. Every morning, Surah Yaseen. Every evening, Surah Tabarak al Surah Mulk. And Surah Sajda, Alif Lam Mim Sajda, which is in the 21st Juz. And Surah Waqiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to gain his love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to connect with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us constantly in the state of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that when we leave this world, then we are also in the state of dhikr and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when each and every one leaves this world, we pray that Allah takes us at a time when he is pleased with us and Allah takes us at a time when our tongues are moist with his dhikr and especially the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilik Jazakallah khair ahsan ya shaykh for this uh, inspiring and thought provoking uh, bayan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept, accept from you and give us all the tawfiq to practice upon what has been said. And Allah subhanahu Amen. wa ta'ala reward you immensely for your time and your, for, your, for your effort. Jazakallah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So now, inshallah, we are moving on. We are fast approaching the end of our uh, session. We are in the last half an hour of our session. And we still got uh, guests to appear and, and to make the presentation. And inshallah, our next guest is uh, Sheikh Qari Umar Aswat. Um, Sheikh uh, Qari Umar. Okay. Qari Umar Aswat is an award winning reciter of the Quran and he has uh, represented the UK in uh, international levels in competitions throughout the world, including in Dubai, Egypt, Jordan, and other places. He has ranked first in the European competitions held in Croatia, Croatia 2009 and he has led Tarawi prayers in UK, Canada and other places including uh, within Al Hidayah Foundation. So he will be joining us very shortly imminently. In the meantime, I would like you to uh, I would like to remind you again that uh, please do follow us and subscribe to our channels on YouTube, on Instagram and Facebook. Keep uh, keep up to date with the latest developments and events uh, that we will be hosting uh, through this platform. And also, I would like to give my heartfelt thanks to all the guests who have participated in this event from throughout the world, uh, from various places. We have guests who have joined us from Jordan, Egypt, from uh, Mecca, from uh, South Africa and various places within the UK Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept every single one of them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward, reward them immensely for their efforts and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq practice said now we're joined by Sheikh uh, Omar uh, Aswat uh, I would not uh, waste too much time inshallah I will pass over to uh, Karisab to make his recitation Jazakallah khairi for joining us thank you very much Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Iza waqa'atil waqi'ah. Laysa li waqa'atiha kathibah. خافضة الرافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء بسا وكنتم أزواجا ثلاثة فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة 
من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرر موضونة متكئين عليها متقابلين يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون بأكواب وأباريق وكأس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون وفاكهة مما يتخيرون ولحم طير مما يشتهون وحور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما وأصحاب اليمين ما أصحاب اليمين في سدر مخضود وطلح منضود وظل ممدود وماء مسكوب وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة وفرش مرفوعة إنا أنشأناهم إن شاء فجعلناهم أبكارا عربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين وأصحاب الشمال ما أصحاب الشمال في سموم وحميم وظل من يحموم لا بارد ولا كريم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك مترفين وكانوا يصرون على الحنث العظيم وكانوا يقولون أئذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما أئنا لمبعوثون أو آباء الأولون قل إن الأولين والآخرين لمجموعون إلى ميقات يوم معلوم ثم إنكم أيها الضالون المكذبون لآكلون من شجر من زقوم فمالئون منها البطون فشاربون عليه من الحميم فشاربون شرب الهيم هذا نزلهم يوم الدين نحن خلقناكم فلولا تصدقون أفرأيتم 
ما تمنون أأنتم تخلقونه أم نحن الخالقون نحن قدرنا بينكم الموت وما نحن بمسبوقين على أن نبدل أمثالكم وننشئكم فيما لا تعلمون ولقد علمتم النشأة الأولى فلولا تذكرون أفرأيتم ما تحرثون أأنتم تزرعونه أم نحن الزارعون لو نشاء لجعلناه حطاما فظلتم تفكهون إنا لمغرمون بل نحن محرومون أفرأيتم الماء الذي تشربون أأنتم أنزلتموه من المزن أم نحن المنزلون لو نشاء لو نشاء جعلناه أجاجا فلولا تشكرون أفرأيتم النار التي تورون أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نحن المنشئون نحن جعلناها تذكرة ومتاعا للمقوين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم فلا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وإنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم إنه لقرآن كريم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين أفبهذا الحديث أنتم مدهنون وتجعلون رزقكم أنكم تكذبون فلولا إذا بلغت الحلقوم وأنتم حينئذ تنظرون ونحن أقرب إليه منكم ولكن لا تبصرون فلولا إن كنتم غير مدينين ترجعونها إن كنتم صادقين فأما إن كان من المقربين فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم وأما إن كان من أصحاب اليمين فسلام لك من أصحاب اليمين وأما إن كان من المكذبين الضالين فنزل من حميم وتصلية جحيم إن هذا له حق اليقين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم جزاكم الله خيرا
Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much for your recitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely. And thank you for giving your time and uh, and being with us. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Ahsan al for your time and effort. Allah accept. Jazakallah khair for your invite. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. That was Qari Umar Aswat uh, with the uh, recitation from the Quran. And now we move on to our final guest uh, for this event. And uh, I would like uh, to introduce him uh, to you. He is Ustad Umar Hajjaj, who is one of the Imams at West London Islamic Cultural Center in Parsons Green. He has studied uh, at uh, the Sharia, he has studied Sharia in the Islamic University of Medina. He has been involved with a number of organizations and he has been producing uh, some um, a, a very popular magazine called Al Juma magazine. Uh, he has been involved with uh, organizations such as Al Muntada Al Islami and others. And he is currently also the founder and director of Yasin Youth Tours. So he will be joining us and uh, we, we welcome him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us, Sheikh. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you and we look forward to listening to you, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Ahi Muhammad. Jazakallah khair for welcoming me. Inshallah, I'll start. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To my beloved brothers, it's a... It's a barakah to be in this barakah conference. It's a blessing uh, organized by Al Hidayah Foundation. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and reward you all. And this topic today, we're going to speak about dhikr, dhikr, the importance of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, dhikr is the key to success, the key to success in this world and the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Remember Allah frequently if you want to earn success. So any person who wants to earn success at work, earn success in his ibadah, earn success in the akhirah, he must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, dhikr is the key ingredient and the secret behind a successful and productive day. When someone wakes up and he prays fajr on time and then he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when he's going to work or when he's going to his studies and likewise when he is finishing work or finishing his studies and he is doing dhikr this is the real secret behind a blessed day a successful day and a happy day because this not only is it from the best deeds but it's from the easiest deeds to do it's the deeds that are from the tongue and the heart and it doesn't require money, it doesn't require effort, it doesn't require you to become uh, tired. Rather, it is something that you are consciously doing in your heart. And as a result, the heart finds peace and happiness. Those who believe and they find rest in the dhikr of Allah, in the remembrance of Allah. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah do, do hearts find rest likewise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a group of people who reflect and ponder inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa ikhtilaf al-layl wal nahar la ayat li uli al-albab alladhina yadhkuruna allaha qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhanaka faqina adhab an-nar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the heavens and the earth in the creation of the heavens and the earth the galaxies the stars the sun the moon and in the earth the oceans the sea the mountains the jungles the rivers the animals the the creation the ayat these are signs and miracles for people who reflect and people of intellect and people who ponder who are these people that allah is praising and speaking about Allah, those who remember allah because once you see the creation of Allah, it reminds you of the creator himself. It reinforces, it reinforces the iman. Uh, let me just put my phone on, do not disturb, because I'm getting phone calls. Bismillah. There we go, my apologies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing these people who they always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remember him standing, they remember him sitting, they remember him lying down. 
ويتفكرون and they think and they reflect and they ponder oh Allah you did not create this in vain you did not create this for no reason subhanaka glory and praise be to you so ya Allah save us from, from the punishment these are the, the true believers who their minds are always remembering Allah they're always conscious of Allah they live with Allah and these are the true happy people because throughout their life whatever happens wherever they travel wherever they go Allah is always in their heart and their minds and they're always thinking of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result Allah will think about them because the hadith says ana ala husni the uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that Allah says that I am as my servant thinks of me as so if he remembers me then I would remember him subhanallah if he remembers me then I will also remember him if he remembers me in a gathering with people I would remember him in a gathering better than these people so Allah is with us so long as we are with him subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in a hadith in tirmidhi where he said to the companions should I not tell you about an action that is from the best that is from the best actions should I not tell you about an action that is from the best actions and the best deeds better than spending gold and silver in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than many good deeds should I not tell you about this they said yes bala ya rasulullah so he said, Dhikrullah Azza wa Jal. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the best deeds the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from after Fajr all the way to Shuruq. And this is the Sunnah brothers and sisters, the scholars, they said the best time to do Dhikr in the morning, the Athkar al-Sabah, is after Fajr. And the best time to do Athkar al-Masa is in the evening after Asr before Maghrib. However, we can do it any time in the day, but this is the best time to do it. So Ibn Taymiyyah used to sit down and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the shuruq. And he said that this is my food and water and my breakfast. Without it, there is no nourishment in my life. Because he, rahimahullah, he said that dhikr to the believer is like water to the fish. Without water for the fish, the fish will die. So likewise, dhikr for us, our hearts and our souls will die. It will be affected, it will be hardened, it, we will be sad, we will be miserable. So dhikr is what softens the heart. The Prophet ﷺ said the example of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not remember Allah is like the dead person and the alive person. Because our hearts are dead. It's actually true, our hearts become dead when there's no dhikr. But the moment you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, especially many times, kathiran, then the heart becomes polished and cleaned and sparkling and pure. Because the munafiqeen, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They do not remember Allah except little. This is from the attributes of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, is that they only remember Allah قَلِيلًا They still remember Allah but قَلِيلًا a few times. We should be from الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Those who remember وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Remember Allah frequently The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said For me to sit in a group or a gathering of people Who remember Allah all night Is more beloved to me Than freeing four servants or slaves From the children of Ismail And we know freeing a slave is from the best deeds but to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more beloved. So the Prophet وسلم, used to love it, used to enjoy it. Likewise, my beloved brothers, we should also enjoy doing dhikr and we should make it and have it. Every morning we dedicate 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of our time when we take a walk, okay, when we are going to work. Don't check your phones, don't go on social media, don't uh, be engaged in anything until you do your adhkar. Because this will be your protection. Because as insan, we are fragile. We can fall into sins. We can fall into ghafli. We can fall into mistakes. We can be tempted. We can uh, get affected from shaitan and his whispers. But when you do dhikr, Allah sends angels to protect you. Allah sends a shield to protect you. And you become strong. You become a strong believer. Al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-mu'min al-da'if. The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. How do we become strong? It's not physical, it's strong uh, or strength in Iman. And the Iman increases when we do dhikr, because Iman increases when we do good deeds, and from the best good deeds is dhikr. My last piece of advice, 
to my brothers and sisters is when you do dhikr, do it from your heart, your tongue, and your mind. What do I mean by that? When you say subhanallah a hundred times, subhanallah wa bihamdihi a hundred times, we all know the reward for someone who says that a hundred times. You can do that in two, three minutes. But what I want you to do, inshallah, is when you say subhanallah wa bihamdihi, every time you say it, you're saying it with your tongue. You're saying it with intentions from your heart and you're saying it with your mind. You're thinking about something that makes you glorify Allah and thank Him. So for example, the first one can be, you think about the sun. SubhanAllah, the one who created this. You think about the night. You think about the day. You think about the food that He provided for you. You think about the clothes that He provided for you. The house, your children, all of the blessings. And you say, SubhanAllah, how glory be to Allah, how He made such things. Wabihamdihi and thanks and praise to Him. So you do that a hundred times and you will see the difference. You will see the heart feel strong. And likewise, when you make istighfar, say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, a hundred times like the Prophet sallallahu did, think about a mistake that you performed. Think about something that you could have done better. Think about how you could improve your character. Think about some of the sins that you are embarrassed and ashamed about. And between you and Allah, say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Ya Allah, I seek forgiveness. Ya Allah, I ask you to forgive me and accept my repentance for every time. And then you will think about many of your sins and your mistakes and you will seek forgiveness because tawbah is important. Tawbah, if you don't do tawbah, then you are an arrogant person. You have kibir. You must because every Bani Adam is khatta. All of us make mistakes. None of us is perfect. So we must always seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this is uh, um, this is my advice to my beloved brothers and sisters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us pure hearts and to forgive our sins and to make us from those who remember him frequently. My apologies, I had to go to the office and uh, last minute. So I know the voice, the echoing and the, 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 the video is not the best. But uh, inshallah, next time, uh, I hope to join you guys in person. As-salamu alaykum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran, jazakallah khair, ahsanah, jazakallah for your time and, and for your effort. Allah accept it from you and Allah give you barakah and reward. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you immense reward for, for your time and effort. Jazakallah khair, ahsanah, jazakallah. Shukran. Shukran, jazakallah khair. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salamu wa barakatuh. So we have come to this event, end of this event, uh, which was... Uh, uh, produced in conjunction with uh, uh, um, with the National Hafat Association, and hopefully, inshallah, we hope to see you again on similar platform uh, on a regular basis. Inshallah, our intention is that we will try to produce such events on a regular frequency, and also um, we would like you to subscribe to our channels and keep up to date, and inshallah, take part in our projects, uh, and and inshallah, we hope to see you again uh, on, uh, soon. Um, this event was produced by the foundation in, uh, and supported by National Hufath Association. So um, we'd just like to uh, ask you if you can give some feedback, give some comments. Obviously, uh, whatever we do uh, will be guided by comments and evaluation from our, our uh, participants. So please do uh, leave messages of encouragement, uh, messages of uh, improvement, whatever you, you feel like you would want to uh, leave a message, inshallah, uh, do uh, share your messages with us, and inshallah, we will act on them things going forward better, inshallah. And also, um, if you uh, wish to join in uh, the Taraweeh prayers live every night uh, from uh, broadcasted on our Al Hidayah Foundation channel, YouTube channel. Jazakallah khair and just a small dua before we conclude. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Wawin wa al-Akhirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa turhamna lana kunana min al-khasirin. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sameeu al-alim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawwab al-rahim. اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم 
wa tub alayna innaka anta tawwab rahim subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin bi rahmatika assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh